All right, people, what's going on? What's up? It's your boy, Mr. Locario, the bad boy of the dating game. What's good? So I'm just, uh, making sure this shit is starting because I always get a delay for some reason. All right, but it looks like everything is good. <clears throat> All right, so what's going on, people? So today we're going to be talking about signs that a chick is really feeling you. You feel me? What up, Kenwood Drive? Toddy Kid 15, Savage D Savage, what's good? So uh, remember, guys, get How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day, the hard copy, or get the ebook, or get the audiobook. Because the audiobook is fire. Like, shout out to all the people who got the audiobook. Okay, the link's gonna be below for the audiobook. You feel me? Damn, people calling in already. What's, what's popping? What's going on? Yo, the car, yo, Star Man. What up? What's up with you? Uh, I've heard from kinda, you in a minute. What's going on with you? Dude, I'm chilling, man. Uh, I just had a quick question, man. Mm -hmm. Um, like, so I'm just in the middle right now. I'm just, you know, doing my thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what, what's like, what's your best method for, like, hitting up girls, like, on, like, Twitter, Instagram? Like, those two apps in particular, like, if you don't know them, but, like, you just want to, like, start, like, a quick way, like, get their number. Like, what's the quickest way that you found that works? As far as hitting up chicks on, on, on Twitter and Instagram and all that other shit? Yeah, like, DMing them, like, girls you don't know. Right. I mean, well, the thing is, I, you know... I usually don't hit up chicks on Twitter and Instagram. Only like I usually only hit them up if I met them in person and I get their Instagram, and then I holler at them through that. You understand? But usually, if you don't know them, um, you got to find something on their profile or about their profile to start the conversation. Because what you got to understand is a lot of these chicks got dudes hitting them up in the DMs, just saying, you know, hey, what's up? Yo, how you doing? Blah blah blah. Just regular shit. So they start to ignore those things you feel what i'm saying so you have to s say something that stands out or say something about her instagram or whatever let's say she had a certain picture about you know about something interesting you understand then you ask her about that talk about that and then start the conversation once she replies then you keep it going you feel what i'm saying but generally with uh yeah with instagram and, and twitter is like it's a lot of uh you know dudes a lot of thirsty dudes on there so a lot of times you get caught up in that bullshit you feel what i'm saying Oh, uh, you yeah, feel okay. me? So like, so like, I'm a, I'm a like a, I'm like a huge like, I don't know, like I'm a huge like Kid Cudi fan, right? Mm -hmm. Like if a girl has like a, has like a Kid Cudi, like she says she like Kid Cudi, cause I like DM her, like, oh, you like a Kid Cudi fan, or like, like kind of like that, or right? Yeah. So you talk about something. <clears throat> you know, in there, but also ask a question. So you would you would be like, you know, like, oh, Stab, I just saw you like Kid Cudi. Like, I know a lot of, you know, there's a lot of people that's not really into him, but what made you get into Kid Cudi? Like, he's my favorite artist, yada, yada, yada. You understand? So yeah. what you're doing is is that you're trying to start a conversation off that and you're giving her something to respond to. You feel what I mean? And uh, I would okay. suggest you get uh, my dude, uh, Google Royal Flyness, <clears throat> and he has a book called Tweet Her and Meet Her. Okay, so you, if you want to learn about hitting up chicks on Twitter and all that shit, you feel what I'm saying? Right. So you should definitely, definitely get that book. You feel me? Yeah, because like what I've been doing, <laughs> um, you know, just as far as like, I know it's all about numbers. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I don't know, like, I, I feel like I've just kind of fallen into the, what you said, like just in the whole, the, the group of the, the, the weird dudes that be hitting her up, because like, I, uh, like yesterday alone, I hit up like a hundred girls, like literally a hundred. <laughs> on, 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 uh, like, on Instagram? Twitter, on both pretty much. Like, Twitter and Instagram. And, and what, and what happened when you hit them up? Well, I, I you know, I sent like the copy and paste, like, hey, you're you know, really attractive, my name is so-and-so, here's my number, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. and, and did any girls uh, hit you up, back? Only like three or four. <laughs> three or four? I mean, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's like... Like you know what's expected generally if you're hitting up random chicks you don't know and you know and you're not really because if you're not really saying anything that's gonna catch their attention you'll probably get around three or four you know if you say something that gets their attention you probably get maybe like fifteen or twenty you know depending on what you say but it's it's always gonna be that ratio like I always say it's always gonna be one, usually one to ten percent on average you feel what I'm saying. Right. But like, um, what I do is I'll like, I'll like their picture and then I'll say it, you know, or like one of their pictures. Mm -hmm. So you said you would that do what? Like, 
You say no, you would do. I do that. I like I like like one of their pictures and then mm. you know. Right, yeah, that's the thing. You can, yeah, you can like the picture, and then you can talk about the picture you liked, and be like, "Yo, what's up?" Blah blah blah, and then start the conversation there, and then close the deal. You see what I'm saying? But, but the thing is, you know, um, with chicks, you gotta remember with chicks online, especially if it's like a chick who, you know, is one of those Instagram chicks where they just show pictures that they ass all day. Like, like this is girl that I know, that I know personally who I follow, you know, that I met before, and she's one of those chicks who just, you know ass pictures, uh, ass video pictures and shit and, and all that shit, you know, all day. So it's like, I'm sure she got dudes hollering at her like crazy. You feel what I'm saying? So uh -huh. the thing with that is, is that, you know, most of them, they're just there to get attention. They're going to be using the guys for attention. They're expecting the attention. So the thing is, is that you're going to be blending in way too much with those dudes. You feel what I'm saying? So you definitely, when, right. when you respond to them about anything, you got to come at them just straight on some on some different shit. Not even just like asking the questions, but you know, it's more so what you're saying in the in the um in the question to elicit some sort of response to make her really want to respond to you. You see what I'm saying? Because because it's like anything else. Like it's like if you like like even for you, like let's say let's say somebody's DMing you, you might get like a, like regular messages or whatever, or maybe a friend that you know, or whatever. And they're just DMing you just regular shit. And then let's say somebody says, yo, uh, what's up? I'm so-and-so from this company. You know, um, one of my friends told me about you. And I want to offer you a job that pays you 100 grand a year. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, hit me back if you're interested. Like, that's going to catch your attention. You feel what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's different. Yeah. Something you wasn't expecting. And then so now you're, you're in, you know, enticed to actually uh, respond. You see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So you have to yeah. you have to definitely hit them with something that's going to make them you know actually want to respond to you even if they do even get to your message because you never know some of these chicks they'll have like fifty messages a day of just random dudes doing a whole bunch of goofy shit you know what I'm saying <laughs> so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so nah, that's what I, it is, man. I saw this one thing I don't know if, I don't know if you agree with this but like this one dude he was just like sliding in all types of girls DMs right mm -hmm. and he was um. He was all, he was just like saying like the most like he was almost like starting the whole teasing like flirting thing off that like he was this one girl she was, mm -hmm. I guess she was like trying to be a model mm -hmm. and uh, he said some he said something ridiculous he was like he's like are you even a model like you don't even have a model build and she was like what and, like responded right like, exactly got, like, exactly he still got along mm -hmm. you know. Like he still got further than most dudes just off right of that. because he because he came <laughs> at it right because he came at it different you feel what I'm saying. Because yeah, he came at he came like, at it in a way like that makes someone want to respond. Like into it. <laughs> say that again. It's like she was offended, but like he still got further along. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. He still was on his mind. Exactly because well, well, the thing was what he did was he said something that questioned her uh, that made her like it almost it's almost like he was like uh, you know like kind of digging at her. You understand what I'm saying? Which will yeah. make her want to respond in a way. To 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 like basically like say oh I'm not this or I'm not that you know she's trying to um, you know protect her ego so he got at her right. so that she's gonna actually respond to him and then he can probably start the conversation there you see what I'm saying so all it is is really right. getting in, getting into the point where they're able they're they're enticed to respond because the the worst right. thing you can do on in any situation either it be online. On you know even you know online dating sites Instagram Facebook whatever or even in person, the worst thing you can do is blend in and be and be on some right. regular shit. You understand because then it's gonna right. come across as some regular shit. You see what I mean? And then it's easy to gloss over, easy to ignore, easier for her to just be like whatever and not really think about it. And that's not what you want. Right. You want her to really you know be trying to get at you. So you gotta definitely come right. at her differently. You see what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, okay, that's how I'm going. Uh, very, very last question because I know you got other people calling. Uh, on Tinder, right? Right. Um, what's like, like are women are they more receptive to like uh, pictures with you like in a suit or like like uh, pictures with you like with other I guess girls? Like what 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 pictures are women like more receptive to? They're like, oh yeah, I'm, uh, swipe right on him. Right. Well, Tinder with for Tinder, right? I always tell guys this: one, make sure. That you got at least at least one picture, right? That looks like it was shot professionally. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, I'm, actually, all my pictures are on my on mine. They're all they're all professional. Shot. Good. That's even that's even better, right? 
Um, another thing you can do, and I don't know, I don't know if you guys are looking on the screen because I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show you pictures from my Tinder joint because I, I, um, I, um, you know, I'm on Tinder and shit. So let me, so let me, let me just show people on the screen for when you guys look at the playback and all that other shit. But yeah, for Tinder, it's like you gotta have a picture. You should have a picture of you with a professional shot. Also, a picture of you not looking at the camera. So, I'm going to show you guys my, my first picture. This, this is my first photo of, on Tinder. You see how I'm not looking at the camera? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, on a psychological level, it's like a thing where, um, you know, you looking away, right, is something that, you know, entices the female because you're not really looking straight at her. Now, it's okay to have a, a, a picture you looking straight at the camera. But for some reason, like, the, the looking away of it, it's almost like, you know, I'm not really paying attention to you, I'm doing my own thing, I'm in my own world, I, you know, I, and then, and it's like she wants to get your attention type of shit, it's all in the psychological wow. subconscious shit, right, so that's one of the pictures, now the okay. next picture, next picture right here is this, this me right here, and, and, and most of these pictures I have are professional looking pictures, so the reason why right. I say have a professional picture is because it looks more crisp, you understand what I'm saying, like, right. and these pictures, and also make sure your pictures are touched up, meaning, if you, you know, Photoshop these motherfuckers, meaning don't Photoshop it to the point where you're looking like not, you're not looking like you. But what I'm saying is, yeah. is that the picture should be, it should look like it's like it's in a magazine. You feel what I'm saying? Like that type of shit, right? Uh, okay. So, so, you know, so first picture, you know, have a picture of you looking away, have a picture that's professional. Also have a picture, you know, you could have a picture with you and a girl. That's That also works too. If a, you and a cute girl chilling, looking like you're having fun. This is another picture of me. At the bad boy seminar that I got on there, so it's showing that I actually do shit like shit that I do. You feel what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. my dude, my dude, uh, you know, Miles Cunningham took um, all of these pictures too. So if any of you guys need photos, holla at my boy over there. It's another picture, another looking away picture and shit. You know what I'm saying? And then, mm -hmm. and then this is just another picture that um, you know, Miles took or whatever. So all all these pictures are so it looks crisp, it looks clean, and it stands out. From when the women are actually, you know, um, when they're swiping, you understand when they're looking, so it mm -hmm. catches their eye if it's if it's something sharp, something looks clean. So it doesn't necessarily mean you have to be in a suit, but it should be you showing, you know, yourself looking clean, and also you showing yourself doing something, like showing a part of your personality, showing, you know, like let's say if you like mountain climbing, show you doing something in the mountains, show you doing something in the gym, show you doing something in life. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you should have at least yeah, one of those I'm, pictures. Uh... You know I'm, I mean? a, I'm a black belt in martial arts, so I guess I should post one of those, right? Yeah, yeah. So post one of your joints where you're doing your, your, your karate or whatever it is. You understand? Showing yeah. some sort of your personality because it's going, that's the thing that will grab him. Because she'll be like, oh, okay, I, I'm, you know, I, I like the way he looks. Oh, he does this. He does that. You know, you have a picture yeah. with you and a girl. It seems like you got shit going on, whatever, whatever. And then, you, you know, you mm -hmm. keep that move. So there's a lot of different things that you can do for your profile. There's not like one size fits all things so there's a lot of options you could do you see what i'm saying right. but the thing is is that when you you know i always tell guys that the most important thing is to have at least one picture of you in a, a professional looking picture like almost like a headshot from an actor something that looks like it was like you was like like it looks like you should be in a magazine cover or something or something that looks like it would right. be in a magazine you know don't don't too, don't do too many dark photos with you know with the camera in the bathroom looking like you you just chilling in your bathroom taking pictures in front of the mirror like yeah, none of that uh, shit you feel what I'm saying and uh, Frank Truth yeah, TV in the chat room said what about pictures with friends yeah you could definitely do you know pictures with you and friends and shit you know cause I have cause I even do um, I'm even on Bumble right and I, so I got I think one of my pictures on Bumble is me at some party chilling with a whole bunch of people and shit let me see if I can find that um where's this picture at damn I can't find this shit but yeah, this, I had um I had a picture of me with a whole bunch of friends on one of the joints. I had another picture of me in a studio, like you know, um like doing some other shit. So it's a lot of different things. So I, I switch up my pictures on different sites, see which ones work better, and also try to switch the, your pictures up a lot. So we switch up your main picture to see which one works the best. You see what I'm saying? So you know. So yeah, that, yeah. that's how you All can right, make man. it happen. Thanks, man. Man. All right, bro. I'm gonna let you, man. Right, be safe. Oh, thank you. All right. So before, but let me let me let me let me get to the topic real quick before anybody else calls in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna I'm I'm do the top. I'm gonna talk about the topic real real quick. Shout out to all the people in the chat room. Frank Chu TV. Oh Johnny, what up? 
Savage the Savage, 630 Boy. Who else we got in here? Jermaine Jones. Um, Acid Mike, Dude What 212. The Morphus, Morphus Rules from Detroit. What up? So, yeah. So, what I wanted to say real quick. You know, some signs that a chick is really into you. Because the other day I did a video and I was talking about how to tell if a chick is really down for you. And dude just asking me. They was like, yo, you know, how do you... Uh, you know, you should do sort of like a topic like this. So, basically, if a chick is really down for you, it's just showing that she was, she's really feeling you. You feel what I'm saying? Um, basically, um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so, if a chick is, she's if she's really feeling you, there's a lot of signs that's going to be, you know, that you'll see. So, one of the signs that she's really feeling you is that, overall, the interactions you have with her are easy. You understand? It's like, everything seems easy. It flows easy. Um, you know, meeting up with her seems easy. When you're on a date, everything seems cool. You know, she seems like she's trying to accommodate to you. You understand? And those things are, you know, she's basically making it flow easy. So if a chick is being uncooperative and she's, uh, you know, making shit hard and difficult, that's a sign she's not really feeling you that much. So the easier the chick makes it makes the situation, the more she's feeling you. You understand? Because what happens is when a chick finds the guy she really likes... She wants it to work out, you know, really well. She wants it to work out really bad. She's like, I want this to work out because I like this guy. You feel what I'm saying? Now, another sign that she's uh, really feeling you is that she will respond to your call or text within 24 hours. You understand? So, usually if a chick's really feeling you, she'll, you'll text her. She'll text you back within like 5, 10 minutes. But if she takes more than 24 hours to hit you back... She's not really feeling you like that. But if she, she responds to you within 24 hours, she is really feeling you. You understand? Um, another way to know that a chick is really feeling you is that she is ready to get physical with you as soon as possible. You understand? So she's quickly ready to, uh, you know, make some shit happen with you on a sex level. Now, there are exceptions to this because sometimes you might meet a chick who for whatever reasons like religious or you know just her 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 um upbringing or whatever might lend itself to her sort of feeling like or just the way she was raised or her beliefs might make her feel like well I'm not supposed to be you know too physical with this guy too quickly you understand but that's usually rare cases because if she's really really feeling you a lot of times even if she believes that or even this if that's how she goes she gets down um what happens is that if her feelings for you are so strong, it might let her want to actually, you know, do it anyway. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, so that's the thing. Um, another another uh, thing that you got to understand when if a chick is really feeling you, right, is that if you end up doing a whole bunch of bullshit, you understand? Meaning, let's say you... Uh, stop calling her or some shit, or let's say you um, like set a date and then you flaked on her, or you play you're playing her, or you're you know you just you're just being an asshole to this shit. You understand? If you're being a, like a super cornball asshole type of nigga, and she keeps fucking with you, and she keeps coming back, you understand? She's she's feeling your ass. You understand what I'm saying? She's feeling you. See, a lot of times though, you know, you have girls who will, you know, keep fucking with you because they have um they they're insecure. So their insecurity will keep them, you know, hollering at you. You see what I'm saying? Even though you're treating them like shit. But some girls, you know, because most girls have a little bit of insecurity in them. But a lot of times, if they've been with you for a while and they're emotionally attached to you, and they're really feeling you, you know, you might just be, you know, doing some bullshit and they'll still really, you know, fuck with you. You know what I'm saying? So that's really, you know, how, how it goes. But generally, I would just say this, is that what you got to understand is if you want to know if a chick is really feeling you, just see how easy she's making the situation for you. You understand? It's really that simple. If she's making the situation easy, that means her ass is feeling you. The harder it is, the more likely she's not feeling you. Is that serious? Because no matter what's happening with a woman and her thought process and how crazy she can get with her emotions, her feeling you has to be so uh, 
it has to be so strong. The feeling of her feeling you has to be so strong that it overrides all the other bullshit that's going on. You understand? Meaning that even if she is insecure or nervous to be around you or she's dealing with some other ex-boyfriend or whatever and um and she's uh you know she's going through a whole bunch of shit in her life and she got all these emotions and thoughts her feelings for you have to be so strong that it overrides all of that you understand so that's how that's how it goes but um but yeah so i just wanted to you know get that out there a little bit you understand but um but yeah you guys can start calling in again i know you 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 can't just still they're like you're like mute the skype niggas is calling in all day yo what's popping what's going on what's up what up man who's this it's ronnie what up ronnie what's going on man you've been trying to get in for a minute man you was like he's going in what's going on with you yeah man hey i got two questions though all right yeah um the first question is about confidence. I want to get a quick understanding about the concept of con confidence. Mm -hmm. So you want to... Yeah, um, my question... Oh, no, go ahead, go ahead. My question is, mm -hmm. like, you know, when you when you make a decision to do something and you do it, that's confidence, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it's... it's well, it, it depends on also... It's not just necessarily just doing what you say you're going to do. That's more so, like being you know reliable you understand what i'm saying and more so being like you know on top of your shit but because you can still do what you're trying to what you say you're going to do and not be confident about it you feel what i'm saying but it, it's right. it's actually you know confidence is more so you being you understanding yourself and you understanding what you're about and you being sure of yourself that's what that's really all yeah, confidence right. is is being sure of yourself you see what i'm saying oh you mean like Knowing who you are. Right, exactly. That's it. It's just being it's just being sure of yourself uh, no matter what. No matter what's happening, no matter what's going on, no matter how, let's say, even when we talk about with women, no matter how a woman is coming at you or treating you, you feel what I'm saying? You still are confident. You still feel good about yourself. You still understand your value, period. That's all it is. You see what I mean? But it's hard for guys right. to do that because they're always worried about what everybody else thinks and they're always feeling a certain type of way based off of things happening outside themselves. You see what I mean? Yeah. So, you know. So that's, that's you know, that's what that's all it is with the confidence in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but my next question is, mm -hmm. you know, like, when you, when you, when you start by starting a conversation, like, you said something about going direct and indirect. Mm -hmm. But when you go in, when you go indirect, mm -hmm. what, like, when you throw an idea out there, do you know actually what that is? Wait, say it again if you go indirect and what happens? Like when you go indirect, you might compliment on the girl or something she's wearing or you might do mm -hmm. something in the situation. Right. And you might, like when you go indirect, like if you don't have nothing in the situation to talk about at the moment, what's the best way to do it? And besides, you know, just complimenting on something she's wearing or what she's doing or whatever. What's the, what's the next thing you can do? Right. Well, the thing is, when you go indirect, like like the best way, like for anybody who don't know, when you go in indirect, the best way is to use something in a situation. So, something in a situation isn't necessarily always comment on something she's wearing because the everything there's a lot of shit happening in in every situation. You see what I mean? So, yeah. If if you if you talking to a chick, let's say you standing, um, you know, in a in a coffee shop or something, you online about to get coffee. You understand? And, you know, you don't have to comment on something she's wearing. You could comment on something about the coffee shop. You can comment. You can say something to her about, you know, the line. Be like, hey, you know, like, you know, you could uh, talk, turn to her and be like, yo, is the line always this long when you're in here? Like, you know, is it always like this? That's just you using something in a situation, which is the line to start the conversation. You understand? You could say to her, hey, what type of coffee do you usually get? That's you talking about something in a situation to start the conversation. There's so many different things that you can talk about in the situation to start the conversation. The thing is you have to be aware of the context and what you're around and what's going on. You see what I'm saying? Or the context. Right. That's it. That's all you got to figure it out. That's all you got to figure out. So basically, it, you, so you basically use the context. Right. That's all you got to do. Use what's happening. Any situation. Like, you could literally just be fucking in a laundromat. You feel what I'm saying? Chilling, doing your laundry, and there's a chick over there, you know, doing her laundry, and then you could say to her, like, oh, you know, 
you know, what days do you usually do your laundry? Because I, you know, I usually like to come on Fridays because it's a little bit empty. You understand? Like, whatever. You can talk about anything in the situation or say anything in the situation to start a conversation. You see what I mean? So that's all you got to do. Yeah. But you got to be observant about your surroundings. You see what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. It's like, yeah, it's, I, it's, kind of, it's kind of hard for me to do that. You know, mm -hmm. I, have, I got a hard time doing that. Mm -hmm. But it, that's the thing. You, you know? got to, this thing, you got to be more, you got to take time to be more observant. So what I would suggest you do, and this is an exercise you can do, is that whenever you're out and doing anything, even when, like you can even start in your house, you can observe what's going on in your house, what's hap what's what's around your house. Like, like, like for example, if you're looking at the screen right here, there's a painting behind me, I'm wearing a snapback, there's a, a couch behind me, you understand? Like there's things that you can observe, you understand what I'm saying? Or you, you yeah. go outside, you walk down the block or whatever, you walk out your house, you observe there's cars passing by, people walking by, there's a store over there, there's some grass over there, there's a, a, a mailbox, like anything in your in your situation you have to observe because that's going to give you the ammo to actually speak and talk about certain things. You see what I'm saying? You also observe I, the situations you're in. I think I know what you're talking about now. I think I know what you're talking about. You're talking about perception. Right, exactly. Exactly. And, and also you got to observe, you have to be, you have to understand the situations that you're in. So, for example... You know, I always, always, always say there's, there's a thing that I that I talked about before in a few of my videos where I call it um, a special occasion. And what a special occasion is, and this happens a lot of different times where you're in a situation where something is happening that everybody's thinking about. So, for example, I, I'll use an example. I remember I was in the train station one time and I'm standing there waiting for the train and the train was taking a long time to, to, to get there. Right, so it was like maybe 15, yeah. 20 minutes, and then they s announced that it's going to be another like ten minute delay. So everybody's on the train tracks, thinking like, "Damn, what the fuck? Like, why is this train taking so long?" So I'm standing there, and there's this hot Asian chick uh, standing near me. Right. So all I said to her, I was like, "Damn, don't you hate when these trains do this? Like, you know, people pay all this money, and then the trains, you know, having all these delays." And she's like, "Oh yeah, I can't stand that, and you know, I'm late. I'm supposed to be somewhere, blah blah blah." And then we started talking. So. We're both thinking about that stuff because that's what's happening in the situation. So that's what we call a special occasion, meaning we're all on the same page. So it gives you something to talk about. You see what I'm saying? So it's it, but you right. got to look out for those situations. You see what I mean? So is that is yeah, that so type of? About, so it's all about perception, like being perceptive of the new thing. Right. Right. Exactly. Because it, it's like when you look at it. Perception to look at your surroundings, mm -hmm. it gives you an idea of different things around you. Mm -hmm. Right, right, exactly, exactly. And then those, oh, those, okay. and those different things give you, you know, um, information that you can start conversations with. You see what I mean? Like I could be, I could be, I could be on a train station with a girl, and she could, and I could see her like a coffee cup sitting, sitting on the ground, mm -hmm. and I could say something like, "I bet a bum must have left that there." Right, right. Anything, anything. That's exactly. That's anything. You see what I mean? And then so, yeah. By saying that, you're talking to her, and then now you can get into a conversation. It's literally anything that you can, you can, you know, say to bring up conversation. That's all it is. You see what I mean? And that's what's so good about the yeah. indirect thing because at this point you're not really um, like going in, going in. So this is this is good for guys who are scared of rejection because at this point you're not really closing the deal yet. So there's nothing really she can reject you about because you're not really um, asking her anything. You're not really like trying to get anything going at this moment. Now, all you're doing is you're saying something to see her response. And then her response tells you how open she is to having conversations. You see what I mean? Yeah. And that's it. That's how you do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that, man. But yeah, but I appreciate you calling, bro. All right. All right, man. I'm out at you. All right. All right, people. The call in number 646-481-3901. We got up in the place. We got the alpha male in the building. Chris G. More live. Sticky E. What's going on? But yeah, you know. Well, let me see. What's going on? Who's this? Hey, this is uh, Nell uh, calling from uh, South Jersey. What up, bro? What's going on with you? Hey, 
What's going on, Lucario? I got a uh, question that's pertaining to the uh, topic. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a, a situation, an uh, out-of-town situation, actually. I met a girl mm -hmm. up in Canada for Caravana right. in the beginning of August. And then, you know, we kept in contact or whatever. Didn't really hit her up on a consistent basis like that, maybe like weekly just to, to keep in contact or whatever. Mm -hmm. So just to make a long story short, she hit me at the end of August and was like, yeah, um, I'm coming to Miami mm -hmm. for Miami Carnival, which was just this past weekend. Mm -hmm. And uh, me and my girls, we got our trip booked and everything else. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Right. At this point, I didn't, even have, I didn't even have my trip booked on my, on my end. Right. So, um make a long story short you know we kept in contact from about a month and a half or whatever mm. and and then you know i let her know prior like i finally got my my trip booked and you know she are at this point is already established that we're gonna get down when we link up so mm. she we don't be basically on the same page so this past weekend comes and i text her prior to this past friday like um you know what what day are you flying down mm. and then she never, she never answered my, my uh, text messages. Right. So then I flew down to Miami on Friday, FaceTimed her, no response. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, okay, cool. I'm, in, I'm down in Miami. I'm messing with other chicks anyway. So I wasn't really tripping. Right. But then I realized Saturday come, I'm like, she still hasn't even hit me back yet. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what the hell is going on? So at this point, I'm thinking like, she must didn't come. Right, so, right. <laughs> so I reached, I reached, I reached to, out to her like one more time. And she still has not reached out. So my thing is, what what's the proper way as far as handling this situation? Should I reach out one more time to let her be like, hey, um, I'm just reaching out. I'm just trying to see, you know, what happened. Mm. This is going to be my last time reaching out. If I hear from you, cool. If I don't, cool. So, you know, I, I wanted to get your opinion on that because it was very strange. Like, she just basically just got ghost like that. And my thing is, if you didn't come, you didn't come. It, it wasn't even that serious. Right, or you didn't right. Get ghost. Right. I, what I would do, I would just basically charge into the game and not contact her at all. You feel what I'm saying? Like, because right, at this right. point, because usually, usually, because like even in my book, like on uh, in, in How to Have Sex Two in a Day, I talk about like this thing called the ultimatum call where you sort of, you, you hit a chick up twice and then on the third time you let her know like, hey, I ain't going to holler back at you. But this usually, right. that's usually when you first meet a chick and y'all haven't really communicated. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But if you right. and her have been communicating... And all of a sudden, she just stopped, you know, responding or whatever like that. Is basically, yo, just charge her ass to the game. Like, stop hitting her up. Yeah, stop doing any of that yeah. shit. Because she, know, she knows you hitting her up. She understands what it is. But she's, it's it's like, it, see, it's one thing. This, this is the thing. It's one thing for you to meet a chick and you you try to hit her up and she don't respond to you. At this point, she don't really know you like that. You haven't really communicated. So it is what it is. Whatever, right? But right. if she, if y'all been communicating and y'all been trying to, you know, sort of talking and everything seemed cool and all exactly. of a sudden she just out of the blue just stopped hollering at you, then fuck it. You understand? Like, then you just, you just, go, you just disappear from her too. It's like, all right, cool. Well, you ain't hollering at me. I'm, I'm going to keep it moving. You feel what I'm saying? Because the thing is, if you keep, if you keep calling her, if you keep texting her, right, every time you text her back from her, like, let's say you, you said you hit her up that time, she didn't holler at you, you hit her up again, she didn't holler at you, every time you hit her up without her responding, that's making her feel like she still has you around to where she, right. she don't need to do nothing. She could just, you know, sort of, whenever she feel like it. You understand? So, the thing is, right. you have to eliminate yourself as one of her options. And the way that you eliminate yourself as one of her options is to stop calling her at all. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So that's right. that's what you got to do. You know, <laughs> like, yeah. like it's it was crazy. very, it, you know, it was very weird. Like I said, like she would send me pictures and mm. you know, tease. Pretty much, I felt like at the end of the day, I felt like I got teased. I mean, at the end of the day, mm. she wasn't going. Just say you wasn't going. It wasn't that deep. You know, right. I mean, well, women see, up in see, Miami. see, that's the thing. You 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 got to understand. You 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 making a mistake of 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 thinking women do things that you know make logical sense a lot of times. You understand right. what I'm saying? Like they're they right. a woman's a woman's energy is very passive or passive aggressive. So the, instead of just saying something that would make sense, like, yeah, oh, you know, hey, what's up? I'm not really gonna make it out there, but you know, let's kick it whenever. You understand whenever we get a chance, whatever. And that would have been it. Right? right. But the right. fact is she she she's in a situation where she's probably has some other shit going on with either some other dude or she going through some shit that's, you know, um, 
going on in her life that you have no, you don't even know about, or, you know, she just feels maybe embarrassed to feel like she couldn't afford to come to Miami. You don't know what it is. You feel what I'm saying? Right. But either right, way, right. either way, it's, it's not really your problem. Like, don't even worry about that shit because I always say to, it doesn't matter. The reason why a chick is not getting back at you doesn't really matter. The, the, all that matters is, is she not getting back to you. So, the, right. the you understand what I'm saying? So it don't really matter the reason. Right. You just saying you ain't doing it, so it ain't happening. So fuck it. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So uh, you got to keep that shit pushing. Right. You see what I mean? Exactly. Exactly. And and that's pretty much the mindset that I had. I just wanted to get your opinion on it because right. I was like, you know what? I pretty much already deleted. I deleted the text message. I deleted her phone. Her phone number completely out of my phone. So right. it's like, okay, I was gonna do one more. I was gonna reach out one more time for the last time. Nah, and, don't and do it. She didn't reach back. Fuck it. Don't so, do it. Now if that he... you say that, I'm like, fuck it. At the end of the day, it's all good because I got other chicks that I bagged mm -hmm. from, from Canada that weekend anyway, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to go back to Carabana next year. So, right, right. You know what I mean? Right. It is what it is, man. Yeah, just but, try, try yeah, to the game. Up, I don't want to hold up your line, though, man. Thanks, mm -hmm. man. I appreciate it, man. I'm going to keep that up. in mind, too. That's what's up. All right. All right, bro. I'm going to holler at you. All, all right, right maybe easy, man. All right. All right, what's popping? Who's this? What up? It's more alive. Oh, what's going on? Where you from? Indianapolis. All right, so what's going on with you, bro? What's good, Mr. What's good, Mr. Lucario? I'm you know, chilling. I'm doing the community service and everything. I appreciate that, brother. That's what's up. That's what's up. So what's going on with you? Ain't nothing going on with me, man. I ain't want much, but uh, the comments are crazy. These <laughs> callers and the, the comments, you know, the economy between them both. Right. Yo, it's like this. I see it like this. Um, like I tell, I got coach my son's team, right? And I tell all the players, like, you know, you practice, of course. So when game comes, you don't have to think about it. If you right. Too much right. thinking, means you're not in preparation mode. Right. So now right. translate that over to the ladies. Mm -hmm. For as far as knowing the lady that you know wants to have demos with you and things of that nature and whatnot. If a woman is gonna make it easy or is really, really feeling you. It doesn't matter what's going on. Anybody right now that's got that chick that they know that they can hit up tonight, mm -hmm. 4 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. she'll drop everything she's doing and come and she will fuck with you. Mm -hmm. Everybody has that. Right. But they know they got that card to play, that was like a Trump card or whatever that they would call it. They got that card to play because they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. But she's showing you that sign that you can pretty much you can do whatever it is that you you want to do but you're not thinking about it right it's natural right and you're not instinctively deliberately trying to play or trying to it's six that you know you can call seven months and heck they'll be ready for whatever you ain't talked to them in seven months mm -hmm. so i think at least in my humble opinion a lot of dudes are over analyzing and overthinking right way right to the body. and like you always preach as far as going out there getting your numbers up you know doing the getting out there in the game getting your feet dirty you you have to do that. You have to come out. You have to practice because that's what's building your confidence. Mm -hmm. So you're not looking all discombobulated. Right. You're around the so knowing what's going on. Right. This right. Be able, it's easy. Everything's gonna be transparent. Right. Nah, real shit. Real shit. Now you you talking facts because you know a, a lot of it is really getting yourself in a zone to where. All this stuff starts to come more, you know, becomes more natural to you. You understand where it's not, you're not even thinking as much because it becomes a part of you. You see what I'm saying? So I always tell dudes right. like, yo, you got to be out there putting in the work, practicing, getting your feet wet so that you can see how you uh, feel in the game. You feel what I mean? Because you're not going to know how, how it feels or what you need work on or, you know, what, what type of things you should, you could, you know, do better or get shit popping if you don't get out there. So it's like dudes got to really like push it. You know what I'm saying? And so that's that's the thing. That's the thing that cats don't that they don't really understand a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? So you know. Right now, want to complain about their record? You know, or when it comes to game time, you know that while they feel a sore and all of that, they complaining like the, the other side is. You're a, you're a man. You know, mm -hmm. you gotta always you know preparation. You know, proper preparation and right. all, all of that. So right. Went through with it. Right. But you know, I didn't I didn't have much much on it. That that's all I wanted to, to really drop in. You know, I appreciate everything that you do for brothers and it's it's beautiful to have these platforms, you know, that's to what's up. really put dudes up on game. That's what's up, bro. I appreciate you calling in, man. You already know my man. Alright, bro. Yeah, that's that's what it is, man. You know, you guys gotta 
You gotta definitely like be out there and and, and make it happen because then the shit's gonna start being way more natural to you. You see what I'm saying? Because a lot of this stuff, especially like a lot of stuff the pickup artists teach, it's they're breaking down, um, you know, the, the, the shit and trying to break it, make it more simple. But it's, you know, they're trying to get you to that natural state a lot of times. Yo, what's going on? Who's this? Yo, what up, man? It's Gucci. What's going on? Who's this? What's your name? Uh, Weed. Weed. Weed? Yeah, off of Europe. <laughs> what's going on, bro? Yeah, I got your question. Uh, which rapper do you think got the tightest game? Which rapper do I think has the tightest game? You talking when yeah. it comes to fucking with chicks? Yeah, because you talk about simp rappers like Twenty Four Savage right. and stuff, you know. I mean, I don't really know because I don't, you know, like, from, from look on the outside looking in, I would say, from what I've seen, maybe Joe Budden has the tightest game out of all these rappers. You feel what yeah. I'm saying? I, that's what I would say. <laughs> it's like, so, cause a lot of these other cats, it seemed like, you know, they don't really know what they're doing as far as it, when it comes to women, you know, just, just off of what yeah. we've been seeing. You feel what I'm saying? So Yeah, I, because I, in the lyrics, you know, when you look, it's like, damn, they got game because, you know, mm. it's gangster rapping and something about it is like game for me, you know. Right. Well, this is the thing too, you gotta understand something. A lot of a lot of a lot of dudes, right? Yeah. They'll be they'll be good at certain things. Like you got like you know you got a lot of rappers and, and artists who they're good at their art. They're good at what they do. You got a lot of yeah. businessmen that are good at what they do. You got a lot of uh, you know smart guys out there that are good at what they do. But uh -huh. being good at what you do, a lot of time it doesn't translate over to being good with women. You understand? That's yeah. the thing. And I and I talked about this too before because I had. I had this, this article I wrote years ago called the Spider-Man Syndrome. And that's basically what I, what I was saying is that, you know, Spider-Man is a superhero. But uh -huh. when it comes to him trying to holler at Mary Jane, he don't know what the fuck to do. You feel what I'm saying? And that's yeah. what a lot of guys are where they'll be, you know, proficient in all these other areas of their life. But when it comes to dealing with women, they don't know uh -huh. the first thing to do with dealing with women. You feel what I'm saying? And yeah, so, right, right. so that's, that's how that shit go down. You know what I mean? Yeah, because, you know, it's like... I mean, what the fuck, when it was Savage, you know, I thought he was damn gangster, you know, right, you know, right. you know his lyric. And then I see him simping, so it's like, mm -hmm. what, what's going on, you and know? That, but that's, again, that's, you know, a lot of cats, they, they haven't been in that situation where uh, they've dealt with uh, a bad chick. And, th and, this is, and this is what happens when you're not in a situation to, you, you, you haven't dealt with chicks like that. So yeah. when you do get in a position, you get girls who look like that. Who know they can take advantage of the, of of a, of a motherfucker? You see what I mean? And so that yeah. that's what happens. You see what I'm saying? So it, they're it's, getting feelings. They're getting feelings and stuff. But right. They can't think straight, right. You know. You know what I'm saying? So you know that that shit is uh is is crazy how that happened. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really appreciate you know I love uh, your um, like when you like talking about rappers because it makes things everything easier to compare. You know. Right. Right. But also so too, you know, a lot of the rappers. You gotta understand, some of them, you know, they're just getting chicks, uh, yeah. you know, now because they got a lot of money and fame. You feel what I'm saying? So they get a lot of groupies that be trying to holler, or, you know, come through or whatever and all this other stuff. But it's like they still, they still uh, have never been well versed in game. So which is why yeah. some of them will get played, or some of these chicks will just take them for their money or whatever it is. Or yeah, when they yeah. start falling off. Those, you know, the type of chicks that they was once getting or the chicks that was sweating them, they're just gone because it was just all for, yeah. the, for the money and fame. You see what I mean? So it's, it's, right. a, it's a lot of different things that these dudes need to, need to uh, you know, understand. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I get a better, better, like, better perspective, you know. Now right. you tell them what's going on in that. Um, okay, I got one question. Mm. Uh, one more left. Uh, can women be, be like tired, tired of chasing you? When they're always chasing, you know. Mm -hmm. You saying can a woman get can a woman get tired of chasing you? Yeah, can she finally stops chasing? Um, yeah, to a certain extent, yeah. Like you know, it all depends on the situation because some women they're gonna chase you because mm -hmm. they're really they're really just that interested in you to the point where they see so much value in you that they want to keep seeing you and they want to keep getting at you. You understand? But yeah. the thing is, there always has to be a balance. So, mm. if a girl is chasing you, you can't 
just keep like ignoring her, shitting on her all the time. Because at some point, she's going to be like, well, fuck this guy. I'm not going to bother with him anymore. You understand? So then the chasing is going to stop. Yeah. You see what I mean? So, so if she's chasing you, you got to get caught at some point, And then you can start to chase again and you got to get caught. So it has to be like this, this her chasing, you getting caught, her chasing, you getting caught. You can't just be her, keep chasing, keep chasing. And you just sort of like playing around with her too much. Because then yeah. at a certain point, she's going to, you know, stop doing it. And also, too, um, a lot of it, too, you got to understand is the insecurity. So sometimes yeah. a girl's so insecure that she's going to chase because she needs to chase you in yeah. order to feel like um, her getting you is going to make her feel better about herself. So you got to understand, you know, when you're dealing with a girl like that, too, where yeah. her chasing you is more so just her trying to... Uh, you know, get over her insecurity, and and you are the the target of her feeling like, well, if I get him, then I'll yeah. feel better about myself. So you know, it's uh, it's, it's how yeah, I feel. It. I feel it's like uh, I did that because I just want to try it out. What's mm. happening? You know, you want to like experiment with the game, right? Um, so I did that, and uh, you know, but the thing is. It's, it's not like I ignored her. It's more like mm. she always called, she always set up dates, mm. and stuff. But now I realize she'd be like reversing the game. Mm. She want, she like stopping, you know, everything, ain't contacted, you know. She wanna be, I wanna be the chaser now, you know. Right. So she, so she, so she slowed down from doing all that other stuff, and she, she sort of like. So now, so now, are you hitting her up more? I ain't do that, no, no, I still got my game, you know, but mm. I can feel she's like, ain't the same anymore. Right, well also too, it could be another dude in her ear, meaning she could be fucking with another guy, or yeah. guys at the same time that's got her, you know, her, her attention, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, but what about, like, like it's been a month, and mm. she contacts you again, how do you act? So like you're saying, if she stops hitting you up, and then all of a sudden, a few months later, she hits you back? Yeah, say hey, what's what's it going? What's up? You know? Right. Well, it depends. If you want to, if you want to see her and you want to like smash and just chill with her, or whatever it is, then when yeah. she hits you up, just set up a time to to meet up, set up a date. Just be like, oh hey, what's going on? What you been? What's going on? What you been up mm. to? So what you doing this weekend? Let's get together. You see what I'm saying? So, so I can't be like cold again. Like mm. uh, just uh, answer one short cold answer. Nah, nah, you st- nah, you said something up because she's she's getting at you. You see what I mean? So since she's yeah. getting at you, she's trying to see what's up with you. Because if yeah. if it's been a long time and she's getting at you and you're sort of brushing her off, she's gonna think yeah. you totally don't want to fuck with her and then she might just keep it moving. You see what I mean? So yeah. you gotta when she hits you back because she's hitting you back, she's showing the interest, you can say, Oh hey, what's up, blah blah blah, let's get together. Now, if she's bullshitting about getting together and all that other shit, then you just sort of drop her and charge her to the game. But if she's trying to get together, yeah. you get her to get get together with her, get together with her, smash her, and then you get her hooked again. You see what I'm saying? And then you can yeah. start doing the same thing you were doing before. You know, just uh-huh. do what you do, chill, be laid back, and, and have her come to you. You see what I mean? But yeah, if it's been a while and she hits you yeah. back, then yeah, just set up your date, and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it could be harder for her to make a chase again. You know, it's mm. like she felt the lesson. I don't know. No, no, but that's the thing. If she, she'll still, if she's, the fact that she's hollering back at you, yeah. and it's been a long time, is yeah. her starting the process of the chasing. You see what I mean? Like, she's already starting, because you didn't, you didn't holler at her, she's hollering at you. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So it's already uh-huh. starting, so she's trying to get at you. So all you need to do is by you, by her trying to get at you, you give her a little bit of that attention, meaning I get together and do something, and then, yeah. and then you fall back. You understand? Because yeah. then that's going to keep her wanting to get at you. Because now, what you don't want to do, the, the the thing is, if you holler, if she hollers at you, you, you get together with her, and then you start sweating her, you start calling her a lot, then yeah. that's going to get her so used to you that she's not going to chase, and then she'll probably lose interest because you're doing you know, uh, so much of the, the pursuing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, it's more like I am... It's like, damn, why she contact me? If I be like... You know, open again. Mm. I'm she's she gonna get the attention. It's more like that. I'm feeling. You know, that's why I'm like I don't know. No, that's the thing. You supposed to see. Th- th- this is the thing. This is what fucks up a lot of guys. Mm. There, there. Ha- you gotta understand balance. You see what I'm saying? Because dudes yeah. would be like, oh, I don't wanna, I don't wanna hit her up because I don't wanna give her no attention. Nah, you gotta 
give some attention to get some attention. There's always balance. So yeah. you can you can have her chasing you. She could still be fucking with you. But the thing is it's balanced. So meaning you're you're she's hitting you up. Uh-huh. You 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 take her call or her text or whatever and you be like, "Yo, let's get together." Now, you uh-huh. saying let's get together, you're giving her the attention, but you're giving her the attention based off of the attention she gave you first. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. she yeah. so it's already it's now it's even it's balanced. Now, once you go and and hang out or hook up or whatever, and then you just be like, "Ah, right, you know, I catch you later." Then you ain't yeah. got you ain't got to really hit her up that much if you don't want to. And then if she's really feeling you, she'll holler back at you again and that starts the process over again. Or what you uh, can do to, or what you can do is you can tell her to hit you up after the, yeah. the time y'all get together. So you you're 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 basically instructing her to holler at you. So that's how yeah. a lot of times you can get a girl to chase you is and I talked about this in a video before where you go out with a girl, you hang out with her and then you tell her when to call you. So let's say y'all, y'all hang yeah. out on Friday and after the, y'all finish smashing or whatever y'all do and you're about to leave, be like, yo, this mm-hmm. is cool. Just um, yo, hit me up next week Friday. You understand what I'm saying? So then yeah. you're getting her to do it instead of you having to do it. And that, that starts her getting used to being the one to really come at you. You see what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't know. She even like said to me, oh, damn, you are all over my head. You know, she, she told me that one time. Right, uh, right. You know? Right, and I don't know what a woman thinking when she's saying it. Is she saying that, or is it real? Mm. She's the way of saying that you like they, that she's thinking about you all the time and all that shit. Yeah, yeah she said to you, I'm all over her head. Right, and that's the thing, and, and the reason why is because you've creating a you've created a situation where she's there's that balance where she's actually coming at you. You see what I mean? Because yeah. the thing is, you know. You 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 want to get it into a, a you want to get into a situation where she's getting emotionally attached to you uh-huh. to the point where she feels like she needs to be around you she wants to be around you so bad which you know motivates her to chase you see what I'm saying yeah yeah so so the thing is all you need to do is make sure that when you're dealing with her you don't start acting needy or clingy. Or insecure around her. No, of you understand what I'm saying? No, no, no. And, then, and then, and yeah, and just do that. And then that's the thing. And in this thing, you got to be okay with the point that with the fact that she's um, that she might stray off a little bit at certain points. You see what I'm saying? And also, so too, maybe she's scared. She maybe she's scared. That's why she's not like before, right. You know? And that, and that too. That's what I'm about to say. Like you know, and, and this is the thing. You also need to figure out what the fuck you trying to do. Meaning. Mm. You gotta be. You gotta think about. Hey, am I just trying to smash her? Am I? Do I like her enough to want to keep seeing her? As far as like making her a girlfriend or like whatever. What are you trying to do? Because oh, the, the yeah. thing is, is that over time things could change. Meaning, let's say she starts, uh, she starts fucking um, like calling you a lot and seeing you a lot. That she's gonna start saying shit like, oh. How come I'm always calling you? How come you never call me? And I want to see you more. Blah 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 blah. You see what I mean? Yeah, and then, yeah. and then, so, so when that arises, you got to be like, "Yo, um, you got to know what you're trying to do." So when that does arise, you know mm-hmm. what to respond and what to do at that point. You see what I'm saying? So if yeah, you, so yeah. if you just want to keep smashing her and have one some fuck buddy shit, you got to come at it one way. If you want to like have her as like a girl you want to keep seeing, you got to come at it another way. You see what I mean? So it's it's different things you got to do, but you got to understand what you're trying to do first so when those situations arise, you know how to respond. You see what I mean? Yeah, I want to I want to keep uh, be with her. I don't want to take uh, anything, you know, too quickly. I want to, you know, meet You want to be on like, some on some fuck buddy shit? Uh to start with, to start with, but later on maybe because she's cool, you know. She even said like 2 right. weeks after the first time we met, she she, she was like Hey, if you if you ask me to be your girlfriend, I will do everything for you. I will cook for you. You know. And See, so she, so like, yeah, so she's she's feeling you. All I would say for you is this, man. Just just keep doing what you're doing as far as, um, you know, like chilling with her. You understand what I'm saying? If she's uh-huh. hitting you up, you know, respond to her calls or respond to her texts and set shit up. And once in a blue moon, right? Yeah. Um, what you want to do is is that you want to once in a blue moon hit her up. You understand what I'm saying? And the reason why yeah. I'm saying that is because since you're looking at it in a way where you actually like her to a certain extent, right? Yeah. yeah. You 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 still got you know, you still have her chasing you, she's gonna be feeling you, all this other stuff. 
But once in a blue moon, let's say every like four or five times she hits you up, you hit her up one time to be like, hey, you know, out of the blue, hey, what's going on? What you doing this weekend? Let's get together, whatever. And then so yeah. at that point, it's strengthening her attachment to you because you're showing that bit of interest, you know, uh, uh, you know, even while she's showing her interest. You see what I mean? Because the thing mm-hmm. is, if she's the one, the only one chasing you, when y'all just keep smashing, she's just gonna think, oh, it's some fuck buddy thing, and then maybe what's gonna happen is she's gonna be dealing with another guy who yeah. is gonna be doing some other shit, who she could probably get her attention pulled in that direction, right? And yeah. then she'll end up fucking with him because now she's just designated you as a fuck buddy. But if you if you want something more than that, you gotta do just a smidget more in that situation to jump started yeah, to getting to that point. But told me I was in her head, so I'm thinking, how long am I going to be in her head? Like, is from weeks, months? Well, that's the thing. Don't, that, don't even worry about that. All you got to worry about is you doing you in the situation, meaning when she hits you up, set up a date, go on yeah. a date, have fun, hook up with her, uh, you know, and when she hits you up again, yeah, just chill again, you know, call her once every blue moon, and that's all you got to do because... As you're doing that, it's going to develop into uh, the situation. Because you gotta, you gotta remember this: the reason she's into you is yeah. because look, the reason she's into you is because it is. She's into you because of who you are at this moment. You feel what I'm saying? Now, yeah, I feel it. if you start acting all weird and start worrying about if she's gonna hit you up or not, if you start worrying about if she's gonna keep thinking about you, if you start worrying about all of this bullshit, right? Then mm. you become the guy who's worrying, and that worrying guy isn't the the confident guy she's into now. You see what I'm saying? So that yeah. worrying can fuck you up in the long run. So don't worry about it. Just do what you're doing, and then you okay. keep you know you keep doing shit, and then shit's gonna you know go down. You feel what I mean? But um, Apple. but yeah, man. But let me. I gotta get to a few more of these calls because dude just that, uh, calling yeah, in. But um, thank you so much, uh, Lacore. That's yeah, what, uh, definitely, awesome, man. Yeah. All right, bro. I'm gonna holler at you, man. All right. Holla, holla. All right, peace. Hey. But yeah, you know, the game is about balance, people. <laughs> That's what it's about. It's all about balance. Oh, man. So what's going on in the chat room, people? What's going on in the chat room? What's up, Explode? What's going on? Well, let me answer this. Yo, what's popping? Who's this? What's good with you, brother? This is Infiniteism. What up? Oakland. What up, bro? What you been up to? Oh, man, I'm all good. I'm all good, brother. How about yourself? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. What's going on with you? Now, now so basically, man, I've been, you know, just spitting game with my partners here, this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. And all the time, I be noticing, and I know you mentioned it in your videos, mm-hmm. man, uh, looks always get brought up when it comes to dudes. And I'm like, right. man, I'm like, hey. <laughs> you know, I always, all the time, I be hearing dudes like, you know, you know, I'm, you know, they always be saying, I'm good looking. Why? Oh, I got a problem. You know, mm. and girls, they always say that to themselves and shit like that. They always mention that, like, girls always, you know, like these type of dudes. This type. Of, I'm like, nah, right. man, it's about your game. And I was trying to compare it to, mm. let's say, if we was playing basketball. You know, I'm pretty sure everybody on here probably play basketball, and it was always that tall, athletic dude. Right. Got on the court. Oh, Athlete, he could run, whatever, you know, tall or whatever, but he ain't had no IQ, right. he ain't had no steel, he ain't had no heart or passion, he didn't care about the game like that, but, mm-hmm. and he always relied on his physical tools, you feel me, but he ain't never had no, you know, IQ was off, Right. He probably just didn't, he just didn't understand the game that well, so mm-hmm. everybody else pretty much served him, you know, everybody like, come on, man, like, what's wrong with you all? Like, always kind of pushing them, like, man, why are you so weak or whatever? But he right. just never had the game. Mm-hmm. Real shit. And I, that's the thing. Like, dudes, see, a lot of, a lot of cats, the reason why they um, they think that when it's all about looks or it's all about money and all this other stuff is because these dudes have never really been in the situation. You see what I mean? They've never been in the, the you know, in, in the actual situations to see what's really going on and what's not going on so a lot of cats that think it's all about looks are usually dudes who are insecure who's never really stepped to chicks on a consistent basis who've never really dealt with women on a consistent basis so they don't know you see what i mean and i'm like yo these cats have no fucking idea and 
also what they do is, and this is what happens with a lot of your beliefs, is that you're always going to try to rationalize things to make sense to go along with your beliefs. So a guy could do think it's all about looks. He'll, yeah. see, he'll see a guy that don't look good or think, or he thinks he doesn't look good with a, a, a bad chick and he'll say, oh, it's because he got money or oh, because, you know, he just got lucky or whatever. So they'll never say, oh, look, there's a guy who who doesn't look as good as me or I look better than him with a girl. So that means I could get a girl the way I look. You see what I mean? And so that's the thing that they're not really trying to, you know, they're not trying to think about that shit. You see what I'm saying? They don't ever want to understand it's so, that. It's, it's so shady because, you know, they don't want to take the accountability. And it's the ego, too. Right, right. Big on their ego to not want to look at themselves and be like, hey, man, like, not to knock you, but I didn't want to tell, you know, my partner's like, you ain't got no style. Mm -hmm, like, right. you ain't got no charisma. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to work on your vocabulary, just the way that you communicate. But, you know, even amongst ourselves, like, there'll be people that can't even talk. Mm -hmm. But they just expecting to look good things like that and I'm like you gotta improve on things in regards to com your communication skills you being yourself and of course you know it's a numbers game as well too right. understanding the game mm -hmm. all them things understanding that you're a man and you're talking to a woman you're not talking to another man or right the same things that interest you in a woman she's not looking at it from the same lens mm -hmm. but it's crazy cause when you're explaining the game to people and it's it's just crazy how it just I don't know it's, this is scary Right, nah, real shit, because, like, and, you know, a lot of times, dudes understand that it, a lot more has to do with your appearance, and appearance, you know, any dude could work on their appearance, you feel what I mean? Like, so, guys don't understand, like, you know, the game when it comes to attracting women, it's a combination of things, you feel what I'm saying? It's a combination of things that make you attractive to that woman, and that's the thing that guys don't understand, so it's, it's, it's your appearance, it's your confidence, it's your mouthpiece, it's, you know, what you bring to the table, all these different things that can make you attractive to women, what, and that's the thing guys don't understand. You see what I mean? It's, it's, it's terrible. And, and, and until they understand it, they're going to be in the same fucking spot. Shit's not going to go well for them. They're going to keep getting rejected because it's a cycle. It's like they think that girls don't like them because of their looks. Then they try to talk to a girl. They think she's not going to like him. So then he brings that corny, needy, clingy, insecure energy. She's Then she's not feeling him. And now he's like, oh, look, it's because I don't look good. And that's what, and that's what it is. You see what I mean? And then it's, 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 it's over. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's crazy, man. Shit is crazy. It, it, it's crazy. It's crazy because, you know, when they think, when, when a lot of dudes think like that when it comes to, you know, it's your looks or whatever. They be waiting so they be waiting so long, mm -hmm. or they gotta wait for obvious clues for a female to choose up on them. I'm like, dude, like, mm -hmm. nigga, you gotta approach these bitches. You can't just be over here standing thinking you fucking Hercules and right. you know, and they they just wanna look at you and just flock to you or whatever. Because right. it's funny, we went out, like, we went out like two weeks ago, and one of my partners kind of looked like me or whatever, mm -hmm. and he kept saying like, you know, you gotta look like this or. And I'm like, dude, you just see me like, like you be see, like you know, you just see me knock a few females. Like we look the same damn near. Like, right. You just gotta approach these bitches. Like, right. If you if you were to use that, then then he'll come up with another logic, like to rationalize his thing, you know, just so because he don't want to, you know, admit that because it's that ego shit. That's what it is. Right, and he you know what it is too. It, it, a lot of wrong. these cats, a lot of these cats, they're always talking the theory. But they're not really going it out and, and actually doing shit. Because even, yo, there'd be times when I'd be out in, in the fucking streets and shit or at these events or whatever. I go to these spots. And, you know, dudes out there, I'd be chilling with them or whatever. And they know I coach and all of that. So instead of going out and talking to the chicks, they want to, like, they want to sit there and ask me a lot of questions. Like, because look. Like, we talking and we chopping it up here because we're online. But if, if me and you was in a, in a spot and there's mad chicks, I'm expecting us to be hollering at some chicks. You feel oh, what I'm saying? Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, instead of just you sitting You go there, your way, I go my way. And I see you later on that night. Right, like, well, exactly. What happened? What did you do? Exactly. If you, if you talking with some feet, if you talking with... If I see, like, you got two or three... I might walk over there right. and help you out or whatever. And exactly. You do the same thing for me. But dudes are trying to sit down and... Come up with a plan and shit. I'm exactly. Like, nigga, do what you do. Go <laughs> exactly. over there and just 
Go, don't talk, don't even look at me. It, you that's know what, what I'm I hate saying. When, when, when you're talking to a female and your partner just over there staring at you. Right, right, exactly, exactly. Like, you're making me uncomfortable <laughs> and you're making this bitch uncomfortable. Right. Like, go away, walk <laughs> over there, just... Uh. Nah, real shit. Yo, there have been times, dude, where I'll be in a spot and, you know, like, I, I you know, I tell cats, I'll be like, yeah, you know, I, I, I'll be, you know, coaching and shit and teaching guys how to holler at girls, whatever. So then these dudes be asking me a million questions and then there be some bad chicks walking by and then so I have to, like, sort of, like, go up to the chick real quick and start the conversation. So now as I'm talking to the co- to the guy, I mean, to the, to the chick, the dude's literally standing there, like, right next to us, just staring at us talking. And I'm like, my nigga, like, talk to her friend. Go talk to the chick behind you. Like, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, man, this shit is crazy. So, you know. Looking lost. Right, exactly. Looking, looking lost. mad lost and shit, you know? <laughs> like, oh, like, man. That shit be so killing me. Ask, so I was going to ask you, you think it's, it's better to just go out there and do it, and then when they see you successful... You feel me doing what you're doing, and you you rather explain it because I feel like mm-hmm. before explaining, you know, explaining whatever you do, I think sometimes people, because I be in auto plane sometimes when mm-hmm. I'm just out and about, I'm like, fuck it, I just go. Right. You know, when you do it so much, you ain't even thinking no more. You just going with your instinct. But sometimes some dude might be standing around overthinking shit. And mm-hmm. You feel me? You think it's better to just explain what you did after, you know, because some dudes, they got to see you. You know, some people they gotta see you do. You get, they mm. gotta see you walk around with the bitches and right, right. all that to finally get the point. Like, oh, okay, okay, right, I, right. I see what you mean. Right. Rather than you just explaining some logic, some knowledge, some common mm. sense, where they'll be like, oh, some people really gotta see it. Right, you know right. Mean? Well, yeah, if they if they want to do that, you gotta just tell them to to stand over there or something. Be like, stand stand back over there. Don't be up <laughs> in the in the space because you fucking it up. You know what I'm saying? Because unless you with a dude who's your wingman who knows. How to because yo, there's certain cats because I could I could tell from from listening to you you understand you understand the game like there's certain dudes that they know what to do in certain situations when you out with them and there's a few girls around or whatever they know how to maneuver and to make shit happen. Then you got some dudes who don't know uh their their their, their social intelligence isn't that high. You see what I mean? And then so so what happens is that when when you out here trying to holler at the chick. They're in a situation making the situation worse for you. You feel what I mean? They're they're fucking up the whole situation. They don't even realize it. So so if you do what you're doing, I say have them stand back a little bit or go over there a little bit. You do your thing, and then after that, you could you know be like, look, I was doing this, doing that, doing that. If they want to hear what you was go- what was going on, but a lot of dudes got to sort of fall back in in order to learn certain things because if they don't fall back, them just being in the situation right in front of you and sort of almost indirectly cock blocking that's fucking up the whole situation you see what i mean it's, it's crazy yeah yeah because the thing because the thing is when you do that when you over here just hovering around first you're making the female uncomfortable right third she's probably looking at it like why did why is his friend so excited that he's talking to me or why is right so right observing? <laughs> this possibly you feel me she's thinking like this possibly this dude's first time you know you you're making it big you're making it a bigger show than it is. It's like, hey, this should be so natural, like taking a shit, like, hey, you right. know, taking a piss or whatever. You should just keep it moving. Just act like you've been there. Even if you haven't been there, I'd be like, just act like you've been there. And just right. Walk the fuck away. You feel me? Bro? Mm-hmm. Nah, real shit. Real shit. But yeah, I would say, you know, when you're out with your boys, you got to, you got to let them know what it is, man. Like, and sometimes you got to let them know what it is before you even get to, to any spots. You know, you understand what I'm saying? Because, you know, you'd be like, yo, yeah. when you get to the spot, like, don't be doing all that bullshit. Just start, you know, talk to some girls over there. When you see me talking to a chick, don't be jumping up in a situation like that. And let, You know what I mean? Because some of these cats, they just don't know how to fucking uh, smooth out the, the situation. It's ridiculous. You feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. It's crazy. It's nah, crazy. man. I, nah, I hear you, brother. Hey, man, nice talking to you, man. I'm about to, uh, got to order your book, too. Yeah, I'm, man, you got to get the up. joint, man. I'm telling you, how that says two hey, in a day, hey, this link, shit is fire, link, bro. Link, now I'm a cheap. I'm I'm one of the cheapest motherfuckers you ever meet. But you, <laughs> you put so much. You put so much work in. I swear to God, I gotta support you. That's brother, what's up, man. I appreciate I, it. The other day, the other day I seen you. Uh, cause you know I'm I'm out here in Cali. You know, mm-hmm. it was on Monday or Tuesday, and I think you was doing a show. It was like damn near like twelve o'clock out here. I'm like damn. This oh dude, yeah, nah. I be like going in on, on, in on New York. I was. It was like three in the morning and shit. Hell yeah, you know. Sometimes you gotta go I in like that. You feel me? Bro. 
Real shit. Nah, I respect it, brother. Real yeah, shit, keep doing man. what you do. I'm going to hit you up later. All right, appreciate the call, bro. All right, All right man, peace. later. Yeah, bro. What's going on in the chat room, people? Man. Crazy, crazy. We got up in here. Woodrow Morgan, what up? 630 boy. Sticky E, you said that's what you was talking about, dude, staring at you. You thought I was that, but I thought you was stripping. That, that's not what you were saying, Sticky E. Stop playing. You was talking some other stuff. Frank, you said, do I, do I smoke females out? What do you mean? What are you talking about? <laughs> he said, is it considered cheating if your girl uses a dildo? Hilarious. Hell no. <laughs> uh, Rebo Gunji said, New York women be acting bitchy and stink. You don't see women in other cities acting like that. Yeah, New York is a whole nother monster, man. New York chicks, you know, some of them be on that bullshit. Like, if you can, if you could get comfortable approaching chicks in New York, nigga, you could approach chicks anywhere. You understand? Oh, Wallaby said, so "Why don't I run ads on my videos?" I don't know. I should. I need. To, I need to check into that. I need to check into that. My YouTube channel is weird though because there's a lot of shit on my channel for some reason I can't do because of some shit. I don't know what's going on with the shit. I gotta check it out. But we'll, I'll see. Man. Oh, you saying do I smoke weed with chicks to hang out with them? Nah, I don't smoke weed with chicks to to try to get at them. Nah. <laughs> Oh man, it's crazy. Whiplash was good. You said after you send, you said on on plenty of fish. After I said send a text, what? After you said text me, and send me, and send your number to females. What? I can't I can't explain your your sentence. Your sentence is real weird. He says, send my number or females will text their number. Oh, so you said when you tell a chick to text you. And you said they will just send their number on there instead of texting you. Is that what you're saying? But yeah, it's crazy. Eric Maurice, you said, how do you fix... The glitch that causes Tinder matches to disappear? I don't know. You got to holler at Tinder for that shit. You feel what I'm saying? You got to holler at Tinder for that shit. I hate when that shit be happening too. You be matching with a bad chick. But sometimes it, the thing is, is that your matches disappear because they the, the, the actual chick unmatches you. You see what I'm saying? That's what happens sometimes. But sometimes it is a glitch. Because I had a chick who I knew that I matched with um, and we were just both matching with each try to match with each other just to see like if we could find each other in there so we set our fucking uh, you know thing to one mile or whatever and then the shit disappeared automatically for some reason yo what's going on who's this hi uh, yeah sad it's from London what's going on what's popping with you yeah I'm good man how are you doing I'm chilling chilling yeah that's good um so, yeah, I mean, I was just listening to you talking about how, um, you know, girls in New York and stuff are mm. uh, hard to approach. I remember I went, I went to New York about in 2009 and mm. tried to tried to appro approach girls myself there, mm. and I uh, got, got blown out pretty badly. So mm. it's just quite funny to, to hear you speak about that. But mm. yeah, it's my, um, I mean, like a couple of weeks ago, I was on online talking to this girl mm. um you know going back and forth sort of flirting and stuff like that right but then again you know she was engaging in some like flirtatious sort of sex sex talk um and i was giving it to her back and then 
I kind of asked if she wanted to meet. Um, but then again, it kind of like went cold. Uh, she started, she like stopped replying when I said, when I asked her out, asked her if she wants to come out with me and I, um, if I, if I, if it would be okay if I take her out somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, she was like, yeah, I don't know really. Um, and so wait, wait when you asked I, her, hold on, wait. So when you said to her, let's go out, did you, yeah. you, cause, cause the way you sounding as we're, as you're talking to me, you're sounding like very, like sort of like you know low energy timid like you said you're asking her hey would you would you like to go out did you sound that way did you say hey would you like to go out or did you say yo let's go out when you free you understand like there's a difference based off of the way you come at the situation yeah yeah um i think i said i'll take you out this weekend or something and then she was like yeah i don't know about dates yet Um, She she said she don't know about what she said i don't know she said i don't know about dates yet um, I'm thinking about it, and then wait. Hold on. She said. She said. She said she don't know about dating. Yeah, she said I don't know. I don't know about dates. I don't know about going on dates yet. That's what she said. Okay, so this is what you tell her. You'd be like, okay, listen, uh, call my, call me back when you know about some dating, and then leave it at that. That's it. Okay. That's it. Listen, okay. let me tell you something real quick. Let me say, and this goes for all you guys out there, right? And this is what I was talking about earlier, and this is what we're talking about with, 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 you know, signs that a chick is feeling you. When a chick says any fucking bullshit about, oh, I'm not sure, I don't know about this, maybe, I gotta see, I'm not really too, you know, comfortable with that, right? All of that dumb shit, you feel what I'm saying? Dude, cut that shit off immediately like and the thing is you could you basically use soft charger to the game right so if she's on that oh i don't know about dating stuff be like well listen you know i like to take chicks out who who are sure about what they want to do in life so you got my number so holler back at me when you um ready to make something happen and then just leave it at that you see what i mean okay and don't and don't Uh. respond to her no more and just keep that shit moving because anytime you see a chick She's starting to play those goofy ass games about oh I don't know about this I don't do that blah 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 blah. What she's doing is is that she's just using you at this point for attention. She's using you as a placeholder. She's not really feeling you like that. You see what I mean? Because a girl who's feeling you, if you say hey I want to take you out uh, this this day, she she's she's either gonna say yes let's do it, or she's gonna say I can't make it that day but. Can we do it this other day? Like, she's trying to make it happen. All of this stuff okay, about, so, I'm not sure, you, you got to keep that shit pushing. Okay, so I, I should have said, I should have said, yo, let's go out this weekend, and that's it, yeah? Just right, that. right. And if she's on that, oh, I don't know about this, I don't know about dating, I don't know what I'm supposed to do, and all this other bullshit, anything besides her agreeing to it or trying to set up a time to see you is bullshit. You understand? And then all you got to do is let her know, like, hey, listen, Here's my fucking number. You got my number. Holler at me when you're ready to get go out. That's it. You understand? Because okay. the thing is this. Sometimes these girls get back to you because what you're doing is you're displaying that you're the type of guy who she can't pull that bullshit on. So what's going to happen is either she's not really feeling you to the point where she's never going to hit you back or she's going to hit you back when she's in the mood or the feeling of wanting to go out and fuck with you or fuck with any dude or whatever it is. You see what I mean? But what what you're doing now is you're differentiating yourself from a guy who she can play games with. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's like... Yeah, I think... Uh, now, go ahead. Go ahead, what are you saying? No, yeah, I, think, I think I messed up um, because when we were messaging back and forth, I could tell that she was into me and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, like she liked my photos and mm-hmm. you know we were talking about our hobbies and interests and you know mm-hmm. I like training a lot you know martial arts and, and y'all were talking about this on what on what were y'all talking about this on the phone y'all were texting back and forth or uh, it was on a, it was online it was on a website not not Tinder not OK Cupid but like a, on another website it was like a dating uh, website yeah kind of yeah kind and, of like a dating site okay there. so y'all were so so y'all were talking back and forth on the dating website right and then yeah. y'all did y'all exchange numbers and then started talking on the phone or was it still on the website? Yeah, this this, this happened like a week, like a, almost 
the week we were talking back and forth, and then and then she was saying some stuff like, um, oh yeah, people people I I get along well with uh, on here. I usually talk on like WhatsApp or, or Viber or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I didn't I didn't say anything. I, I should have said like, yo, give me your number, or I'll, I'll give you my number and you add me on there or something. And then yeah, this this went on. We carried on playing, but then I remember she asked me some stupid thing like, um, oh yeah, what's your what's the worst date that you ever had? And then. And so, and so, what you're saying is, wait. So, what you're saying is, you didn't even have this, you didn't even have this girl's uh, number. Y'all were just all the whole time talking on the site. Yeah. And that's when she said she doesn't know about dating. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm thinking, I'm thinking you already had this chick's number, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like she's talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know. I should, uh, I should, no, I should she like seem stupidly asking for. I should have obviously given it, but. I was too stupid to act, act then, I guess. See, and this is the and thing, I, and this is the thing too. This is why I talk about. This is why all you guys got to go to badboymembership.com to get the program, the easy way to date online for men. Because when you're online, right, you want to do as the the least amount of talking online as possible. Because on when you when you when you talk to a girl online, all the, your only mission is to get her offline. Right, so that's either you you get her you get her number, you know, so that you can start talking, texting on the phone to set up a date, or you just set up the date online. So let's say, for example, you just talking to her online. You say, "What are you doing Friday?" She's gonna be like, oh, "I'm free. Cool. Let's meet up here. Here's my number. Text me your number. I'll see you Friday. That's it." You see what I mean? So all of the talking of like going back and forth, getting to know each other, all that. Save all that for when you see each other on the date. You see what I mean? And but then if you're talking to a girl online and she's going uh, you know back and forth and she starts saying shit like, "Oh, I want to get to know you more," or she keeps asking all these questions, be like, "Listen, we, let's you know, let's meet up. I want to talk to you more too. I want to get to know you more too, but you know, I I I want to see you. So let's get together this day, this time when are you free?" You see what I mean? Always bring it back to meeting up as soon as possible. You understand? So the sooner the better. Like, don't worry about getting to know her. Don't. And this is the thing too. You have to understand, is that you have to make sure that you are controlling the direction of the conversation at all times. You understand? The yeah. problem most guys get into is that they're letting the the female dictate the flow of the conversations. You understand what I'm saying? And so what I mean by controlling the conversation doesn't mean that you're ignoring what she's saying or you're you you know you're not um, responding to her. It's but what you're doing is is that you're sort of navigating the 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 the, uh, the conversation in a direction that's going to get you to the point where you set up a date with her. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So so, so what? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. What you say? Yeah. So you you, you say that I should always like. Um, you know, like statements, I say, yeah, we should meet up, we should meet up this Friday, not, you know, it would be cool if we meet up, or do you want to meet up, or anything like that. It's right, like, right, and, don't, and, don't, this and this is the thing, this is the thing, um, don't really, don't, the only thing you need to even ask her, a lot of times, is if she's free, don't like say, hey, do you want to meet up, or would you like to meet up, say, hey, let's meet up, it's almost, you're saying, we are, let's do this, the only thing you're asking her is when she's free, so that you can meet up. It's almost like you're talking to her like it's going to happen, but you're just saying, let's do this. So you don't want to be like, hey, uh, is it okay if we meet up? Or do you like me enough to meet up? None of that shit. It's, hey, when are you free so we can meet up? You see what I mean? Okay. So for example, let's like let's say if if I'm talking to a chick, if I'm hitting a chick up on an on a, on a online site, right? The yeah. first thing I text her is I say, hey, what's up? You know, this is just an example. I say, hey, what's up? Um... What are you doing this weekend? You know, mean you should get a, get together and get a drink. That's the first message I'm sending her. The first message is about me and her meeting up to get a drink, right? When are you free? Hey, what's up? When are you free so we can get together, meet up, and get a drink? So let's say we we matched on Tinder or whatever it is. I'm like, hey, let's get together and get a drink. When are you free? Right? So yeah. either one of two things is gonna happen. She's gonna let me know when she's free. So let's say this is the easy way. Let's say let's say this is when she's cooperating. She'll be like. Oh, hey, what's up? Yeah, I'm free Friday night, you know, um, after I get off work, I get off work six. Okay, cool. So let's meet up at seven o'clock 
at the Main Street Bar. And she's like, okay, that sounds good. And I'm like, all right, here's my number. Text me your information. So then she texts me her number. So now I'm already on the phone with the chick. I'm not even on the online dating site. So she texts me her number and I said, okay, hey, what's up? Listen, um, so I'll see you on Friday. Uh, you know, looking forward to see you, blah, blah, blah. We're done. You understand? Like I got her off the site and now we're meeting on Friday and I haven't fucking even gotten to know her at all. You feel what I'm saying? Like we're not, we just, we're just setting up the time. That's really literally all you have to do. You feel what I'm saying? Now, yeah. let's say if it doesn't go that smoothly, let's say you, you, you know, I send a message. I say, Hey, what's up? How you doing? Um, what are you up to this Friday? We should get together, get a drink. Are you free? Right. She might be yeah. like, oh, I'm not free Friday. And I'm like, okay, cool. So what day are you free? She'd be like, I'm free Saturday. Okay, let's get together on Saturday at 8. She'd be like, then she'll be like, oh, but um, can we like talk more in here? I want to get to know you more, right? So then I'll be like, well, listen, you know, 90% of communication is nonverbal. So, I, you know, if we really want to get to know each other, we got to meet up. You understand? So now notice I'm responding to what she's saying, but I'm, I'm moving the conversation in the direction that I want it to go in, which is meeting up, right? So then let's say I say that and she'd be like, oh, but, you know, can we like, you know, talk a little more? And I'd be like, all right, well, you know what? Here's my number. Call me right now and we'll talk, right? So I'm still directing it in the way that I want it to go. So I give her the number and now me giving her the number is to see if she's actually going to call because... Sometimes women are attention whores, so they'll just be wanting to talk to you back and forth online all day because they're attention whores. So now I give her the number and I'm seeing if she's going to actually call. So let's say she does call. So as she calls, I, she, I pick up the phone. I'll be like, hey, what's up? She's like, oh, hey, how's it going? I'll be like, hey, how's your day going? And she's like, oh, it's good, blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen, well, um, Saturday, let's meet up at 8 o'clock. And, you know, you free? Can you do that? She'd be like, all right, yeah, let's do that. And I'll be like, okay, cool. So let's meet Saturday at Main Street Bar. But listen, um, I got to run. You know, looking forward to seeing you, but I'll, you know, I got to do some stuff. I got to run, but I'll holler at you later. I'll see you on Saturday. Boom. That's it. The whole time I'm continuously going in the direction of setting the date, period. You feel what I'm saying? Now, if at any time she's still trying to not set the date or trying to throw me on tangents or, or try not to respond to uh, my to the situation, it's either you're dealing with an attention whore or she's not really just, she's not feeling you and she's just playing games. Either way, you got to make sure that every time you're dealing with women on these online dating sites, you are trying to get them offline as soon as possible. No talking about uh, her, you know, her thoughts and feelings and all this. Basically, I would say this. Don't try to get to know a woman online. Get to know her offline. So if you think of that process, all you're thinking about is getting her offline. Period. You see what I mean? And so that's all you have to do. And if a chick is giving you too much of a hard time, you just keep that shit fucking pushing. You feel what I'm saying? So that's all you okay. got to do. It should be, you know, yeah, that quick. It. So, that's, you know. That's where I messed up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, you, you were saying yeah, that. Yeah, Sorry? No, because I'm saying you were saying that you were going back and forth with her on the, the, on the site. You feel what I'm saying? And I'm like, dude, you should have just... Got her off the site, got her number, and then and, and try to meet up, meet up with her. And if she's on that bullshit, then you got to just charge to the game. But go ahead. What are you saying? Yeah, I'll make sure I do that next time. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I think um, I was going to say, I was going to just, I know you're probably sick of it, but I, was, I wanted to bring in the, the looks thing. Um, okay. Just quick <laughs> because there's some. <laughs> go ahead because the topic's never gonna go anywhere. But go ahead. Go, it's like this. This topic's always gonna be in the game. So now, what, what you gonna say about it? Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, no, I just want to bring it in because there's I, every time I I search for your videos on YouTube, there's always some some dudes that make some response videos to your videos saying, mm -hmm. "Don't listen to Mr. Lucario, and mm -hmm. he's only he only gets girls because he's good looking." Blah blah mm -hmm. blah blah. And there's this guy who. Uh, what was it? What was the name of the channel? Um, face. Uh, he, he made some like documentary about. Oh, you talking about uh, the dude? I know. You, I think I know you talking about. It's it's like face and LMS or some shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This fucking yeah, guy. That's it, that's it. <laughs> yeah, he's made like five documentaries. Like, right. Going undercover on Pet Your Fish with with male model pictures right. and stuff like that. And and that's the thing. Let me let me tell you about those. Let me tell you about those male model pictures. Right. This is this is and this is what I meant earlier about how. Dudes do not deal with women in real life, right? 
Let me let me show you guys something real quick. Let me show you guys something real quick. I'm gonna show you something really quick right now. I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to uh, hide hide the the pictures of the women. Cause I'm gonna show you my I wanna show you my Tinder my Tinder joint right. I just want you I just want you guys to see the amount of matches right. So this says 1,027 matches. This is my Tinder account right. 1,027 matches right. Now, this is the thing. There's going to be a lot of women who will match with me because they're physically, they think I'm physically attractive, right? Right? So yeah. let's get it straight, right? Now, matching with someone on an online dating site or sending them a message does not equate to you actually meeting the woman. You understand what I'm saying? So when these guys or or when they do these experiments of oh we're gonna we're gonna fucking uh you know um put a male model picture and and these women are gonna respond to them yeah they're gonna respond to them because they're male models and they're physically attractive so whoever if a woman sees a guy who's physically attractive she'll probably think he's physically attractive you understand what I'm saying but the physically attractive doesn't necessarily correlate to them having sex with the guy. Do you understand what I'm saying? So even though I have yeah. 1,027 matches, do you think I've had sex with 1,027 of these women? You feel what I'm saying? I have any... I, I'll, I'll probably... I think I've probably met out of that 1,027 matches, I've probably met like 50 of those women, if that much. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. So... so were, they sending you, were they sending you messages, those 1,027? How many, how many of them actually spoke to you? Probably like... 300, 400, if that much. You see what I'm saying? So a chick will match with you and not respond. A chick will match with you and you'll you'll send a message. She won't send a response. A chick will match with you. You'll send her a message. She'll send you a message. And then when you try to set up the date, she won't respond. You see what I'm saying? You'll meet a chick off the, on the, off the uh, fucking joint. So I've met girls who I've actually met off of Tinder went out with them, didn't have sex with them. Some of them I had sex with, some of them I didn't. You see what I'm saying? So yeah. Don't get it confused in thinking that just because, uh, you know, you see this video of some guy putting up a male model and the women are responding to him, that that equals sex. See, we're thinking about it from our male brain. We're thinking, oh, if we saw a hot girl, we're definitely going to have sex with her, Right. A woman could be thinking about having sex with you. Then when it comes time to actually having the sex, she's not going to fuck you. You see what I'm saying? And on top of that, you have to understand this. Is that the male model thing... Let's get into the whole psychological aspect of this, right? The male model thing is something that women are responding to through conditioning. Meaning... That those male model types or, and this is why I was telling the guy earlier, I don't know if he was listening earlier, when a guy was asking about Tinder profiles. I said specifically, make sure that your picture looks professional, looks like something that would be in a magazine. Now, why would I say that? Why would I say to make sure your picture looks like something professional that looks like it's in a magazine? The reason why I'm saying uh, I just, that... I just tuned in before I called. Right. So I and, so, and so the reason why I'm saying that is because you're tapping into a woman's conditioning when she sees these guys in magazines that she's been trained to like and think is attractive. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when I'm telling you, like, so so again, when I, I showed my, my, my picture of my Tinder profile, right? And so yeah. when I when I show the when I show the picture, because I'm about to show the picture again on screen of my of my Tinder profile, right? So I have pictures on there. That look like something that you would probably see in an ad or a magazine of a model. You see what I'm saying? So what happens is, is that women have been looking at male models their whole lives in magazines. So what do you think is going to happen when you put a male model on a picture on a profile? It's literally like her looking at the picture in the magazine. So then it's going to trigger that attraction or that attract, you know, that thing that makes her want to get at him now. If she is she going to get at him or she is she going to actually have sex with him? That's up for debate. And this is what I'm trying to explain to dudes is that the 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 her trying to holler at him does not equate to her having sex with him because women have all the different. Sorry, 
Now go ahead, what are you going to say? That these guys are saying that, you know, the good-looking dudes, okay, they may not get to have sex with every single one of them, but mm. their average may be like 30 to 40%, whereas the average to below-average-looking guy will get absolutely nothing. That's their argument. And that's that, and that argument is false. You understand what I'm saying? Because even if you say, even if you say, let's say, for example, you have this guy who uh, is a male model and a lot of women will say he's good looking, right? And I always talked about this. What is attractive, right, is different than what someone is attracted to. So you can think, a woman can think a guy is attractive, but not necessarily be attracted to him to the point where she's going to have sex with him. And you have to understand something. A woman. Having sex with a guy, right, all depends on her comfortability with the dude, right? So yeah. what happens is, is that initially a woman might see that male model and be like, oh, he's, he's so attractive, I want to get at him. So she sends him a, a message, right? Then what happens is, and this is why a lot of times flaking happens, is because, and this will happen to you, I guarantee it, when you, when you message these girls online, is that sometimes when you try to get at them and do something like like for real, once the situation becomes more real, right? That's when the women start to back out. Meaning that they initially is like, oh, he's cute. I want to, you know, get with him. He's attractive, whatever, right? Then if the guy is like, hey, let's say this is a real guy, he's like, hey, yeah, let's meet up and do something. Now she's like, oh shit, he actually wants to meet up. So now it becomes more real, then that's where the nervousness comes in. Because this is the thing. If a chick is, let's say she's a 7 on a scale of 1 to 10, right? Like she's, she's like, you know, decent looking girl, right? Let's say yeah. she matches, with, let's say she matches with a guy who is, is, it's a real guy. It's not like a fake model picture. It's the actual, this is the real guy's profile. This is the real dude. And he's, he has a six pack, you know, uh, tall, good looking dude, right? Mm. Um, her, what's going to happen with her is, right, is that, she might get insecure or nervous about fucking with him because he looks better than her, meaning he's more fit than her. He has a six pack. He's more fit. So what's going to happen is she's going to think, oh, if I fuck this guy and he sees that I have these love handles, he's not going to like me. So therefore, I'm not going to fuck him. You understand? I remember I had sex with this girl where she would not let me turn on the goddamn light. Because she didn't want me to see her. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So luckily we were doing it, but she didn't want me to see. You understand? So these guys who are thinking that, oh, just because you look good, it's going to equal uh, you getting every girl. No, you can get some girls because some girls will think you're attractive. But if you're an average looking dude, a lot of times you're going to get a lot of girls because you're an average looking dude. Because you're less non-threatening to her. Do you see what I'm saying? And so, well, did you did you actually see what she looked like beforehand, or was it just like meeting her in the dark and then just doing it there? And no, there? no, no, no. I saw how she looked. The thing was, and she was she was thick. Like she wasn't fat. Like I like thick chicks. Like I like chicks that have like a Kim Kardashian body. Like she had like a Kim Kardashian yeah. body. You feel what I'm saying? But to her, she felt fat. You understand? So she didn't want me to turn on the lights when we were in the room about to do it. You see what I mean? So, yeah. that, so that's what I'm saying. A woman's insecurity is always going to make shit more difficult for for any guy so it doesn't matter if he's this uh super male model blah 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 so a lot of those dudes who make those videos about uh fucking uh you know oh it's all about the face and all about the looks and these girls and that girls and that's why they're responding to these guys what they're doing is they're trying to set a certain narrative to to make it make sense for them because if they're saying oh those guys get 30 or 40 percent of the girls and the average guys get nothing that's bullshit you feel what i'm saying if like if I have a thousand and twenty seven matches on Tinder, 50, 50 out of a thousand, that's not fucking forty percent. You feel what I'm saying? That's not thirty percent. You see what I mean? Yeah. So that's the thing that that dudes don't, don't understand. They are in a in a in a zone where they're not really seeing the reality of the situation, and they're, they're trying to. Because like I seen one of those videos where he had. I think he had another video where it was some reality show. About uh, yeah. some some bullshit in the dark, and then they saw the guys in person, yeah. and the lights yeah. came on, and all this other. And I'm like, dude, you can't get information from a fucking uh, reality show. Shit is orchestrated. Every and this is why this is why I be telling dudes because dudes always ask me all the time. 
yo, Mr. Locario, how come you don't do no infill videos? I was like, first of all, I'm not a pickup artist, so I'm not doing all that shit because I'm not trying to, I'm not out here trying to be no pickup artist. I don't want y'all see me as but a pickup artist. If you did, you might, you, your account would blow up like probably tens of thousands, of millions of people watch it. That's the thing. Probably, but I'm, I'm not doing that shit. And it is, a, and there's a few reason, re, there's a few reasons why. <clears throat> and I talked about this before. One is I don't feel comfortable doing hidden camera shit on people. You feel what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't want that shit on me. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I don't want some gay pickup artist coming out here, uh, rolling up on the street, hollering at me with a hidden camera, and then trying to make it look like he picking me up. I'm not fucking with that. So I don't want to pick up no chick who probably has a boyfriend or a husband or some some other person that they know and they see me on camera picking up some chick. You know, like, I, I'm not doing all of that. Like, any chick that's on camera with me knows she's on camera with me, period. So that's how I do it. Now, the thing is, but also too, is the reason why I don't do the, the, the hidden camera shit is because the shit is too easy to fake. Like I can literally hire 10 chicks and say, yo, I'm going to walk around New York City and I'm going to make it look random. I'm going to make it look like I'm talking to them and all interested in them and all this other shit. And then I can say, hey guys, look, look at how easy it is for me to get girls on the street. Buy my book. And then you're going to get upset when you realize that the shit is bullshit. Because, because how would you know that I'm not faking it? You see what I'm saying? So that's why I always tell dudes, you only gonna see me pick up a girl if you with me in person. This is why I, I encourage guys to come out with me in person or come to my seminars when I have them because that's when you're gonna see it. But that, but but see the thing is, the fact that it can be faked and that it can be sort of you know bullshit and, and orchestrated is is like I'm not I'm not gonna do it. So the same thing with the with the face and LMS thing is that. He's showing footage, and anytime you see any footage of anything happening, it's it's you know you can't tell if it's bullshit or not. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, face face and LMS looks looks money status apparently. But yeah, I think I think you um, I think in one of your videos you were actually talking about these dudes, mm. not him specifically, but these other dudes mm. that um, were on this website that you tried to debate. Um, mm. They they started like abusing you, like racially abusing you and stuff like oh, that. Oh, you talking and, about um? Well, well, yeah. I think it was it like that slut hate thing or whatever. Yeah, something slut like hate that. Com and, and, or some and some goofy I shit. There was like these dudes like put up videos of of them catfishing these these fat girls. Like they make a fake account on Tinder mm. using um like a male model's photos, like calling it Chad and stuff like that. Right, and right. They get the girls by like two three hours. Um, right and and again like I, and, and yeah. again like i told this is what i told these guys like most of these dudes are dudes who just are on their keyboard in their mama's house in the basement all day who's never actually been out in the real world doing shit and this is why they don't get shit done this is why they come up with these theories of oh you know um i gotta you know, you got to be super good looking. And if you're not super good looking, then you're not going to get girls. Look at how much attention this male model's getting. Oh my God. And I'm like, you guys have no fucking idea how it is to actually be with a woman in real life. It's like, it's so hilarious. And that's what, that's what makes me laugh about the shit because they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. You understand? And you got to understand something. How does a guy, because there's even these dudes on YouTube where they have videos talking about confidence is bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm like, how the fuck is confidence bullshit? Or you, how are you saying confidence is bullshit when you are not confident? You've never been confident. So how do you know it's bullshit? That's like me. That's like someone who's poor getting on a video talking about, oh, uh, you know, being rich doesn't work. Or, you know, and, and like, what the, how, you, you've never been rich. You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck you know about being rich? You can't tell me about being rich. Yeah. You've never been rich. You can't tell me about confidence. You never. You can't tell me about attracting women because you don't attract women. So all they're doing is they're looking on the outside, looking in, but they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. That's the thing that they don't yeah. get. You understand? Just looking for excuses. Right. That's it. That's it. And the thing is with the whole videos and all this other stuff. <clears throat> The thing is, I'm not saying that all of the pickup artists are, 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 you know, videos are fake and all this other stuff. I'm saying that the fact that it can be fake, I can't, I can't fuck with it. You feel what I'm saying? Like I can't fuck with it, and, it, and then it doesn't make any sense because then imagine, imagine this. Imagine I, you know, I go out and I actually 
you know, did some hidden camera shit, picked up some girls, whatever, and then dudes still are saying, hey, well, this shit is fake or whatever. And how could I, I can't even argue with them. You understand? Because what can I do to prove that it's not fake? You can't. There's no way to not, there's no way to prove that the video is not fake. There's no way. You see what I'm saying? And so, so then it's like, it don't even make sense. So this is why I tell guys, unless you are with the person, with that pickup artist in person and see him doing it in person, in live real time and see him doing this on a consistent basis, then all the shit you're seeing on, on, uh, on YouTube and all that is just entertainment. You feel what I'm saying? That's it. It's just entertainment. And I, and I, I like, I actually like those videos. I like pickup artist videos where they approach girls on the street. It's entertaining to me, but I take that shit with a fucking grain of salt because you don't know what's really going on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I want to start doing that sort of thing. Not, not filming it, obviously, but just trying to talk to chicks in the street. But, you know, obviously, I need to... Right, and the thing is... I need to, to overcome that. Right, and the thing is, you got you to gotta be able to do it uh, for yourself. And that's what I tell guys. You got to be able to do it on your own. Because the thing is, is that people like to see other people um, do, the, do it, but they don't really want to do it. You understand what I'm saying? Like all these all these dudes out here that's seen all the, the RSD pickup videos or the, you know, all these other uh, companies pickup videos. There's thousands of those out, out, out here. There's like hundreds of thousands of videos of dudes going up to chicks and, and, and talking to them in the street. So... How many of those do you really need? You see what I'm saying? Because that's not that's that's truthfully like the one of the easiest things to do. You understand what I'm saying? To yeah. approach a girl and start talking. That's so easy. You understand? Okay. It's not. It's that's not. Right. That's not hard. The 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 difficult part about the whole game is actually being able to um, maintain your game and replicate what you're doing to get specific results you want you see what i mean and that's that's the shit that you know guys don't understand you feel me yeah, yeah man yeah i understand it's crazy yeah, man. Right, man. I'm, thanks thanks I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you go man thanks yeah bro uh, appreciate it the way. appreciate yeah, I'll, it man. i'll talk to you later yeah all yeah. right man no problem all right. take care bye bye yeah bye. man i'm telling you it's 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 so ridiculous out here it's so ridiculous out here because, you know, dudes, I'm telling you, man, y'all, because I, I always get that, yo, Miss Lucar, you need to go out there and, and, and do some infields and, and uh, you know, <laughs> I'm like, dude, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. If y'all, if you, if y'all dudes want to catch me on a night where I'm hollering at some chicks and you want to pull out your camera and, and sneak film me talking to some girl, that's on you, but I ain't doing it. I'm not doing it. Because I don't want the fucking headache of when I'm filming some chick, uh, you know, on the sneak. Then I start getting emails and phone calls from motherfuckers talking about, yo, you know, how could you, uh, you know, who's this? And why am I on your video? And I didn't do the, authorize you to do that. And I'm trying to, no, I ain't trying to hear that. Frank True TV say so you know what can't be faked. You should do some live Omegle. No, that can be faked. Everything you see on video can be faked. You know why? Because before I start the live shit, I can set up what I need before I start the live thing. I could say I could be on 14th Street, and I and I say to myself, I'm gonna have a girl on 20th Street. I'm gonna have a girl on uh, 25th Street, and I'm gonna have a girl on 30th Street. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start my live joint on my phone and I'm going to be walking around. I'm like, yo, guys, I'm going to go pick up some girls. Then I get to, 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 to 14th Street where the first girl is at. And I'm like, yo, what's up? And then we start talking. And then I go to the girl to 20th Street. And then I'm like, yo, what's up? Blah, blah, blah. I get her number. Go to the girl for 25th Street. Yo, girl, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then y'all, y'all motherfuckers thinking like, yo, you just saw Mr. Locario. He just, it was live. Yo, he just went up and hollered at these chicks. And they was, you know, cooperating, blah, blah, blah. And y'all had no idea I set all that shit up before the camera came on. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and, and the thing is, I, I know of dudes who personally have fake videos. But I'm not I'm not gonna say no names though. I'm not gonna say no names, but I, I know. 
Yo, what's going on? Who's this? Yo, Mr. Lucario. What's up, man? It's Quan from uh, Indiana. How you doing? I'm chilling. I'm chilling. What's going on with you? Not much, man. Yeah, I was just calling in because I was listening to the show and, mm. you know, people bringing up this looks thing, man. Mm. And I wanted to kind of clear the air with that, too, because I'm, I'm on your side with as far as looks not mattering. Right, right. And how looks can be intimidating to women. Oh, yeah, no that's, that's what they don't understand. They have no right, idea. I was, I was watching an um, interview Nia Long was doing. Mm. And so she was talking about Prince, how back in the day, and you know Prince, mm. considered most arguably the biggest sex symbol in uh, music history. Right. The women going nuts, this and that, Prince is this, this and that. So I was watching an interview Nia Long did, and she was talking about how Prince kind of approached her. He kind of tried to get at her back in the day. Mm -hmm. And how she kind of looked at him and was like, dang, she, she was so intimidated that she couldn't even talk back to him. Mm -hmm. So kind of turned him down simply because she was intimidated by him. Because, mm -hmm. like, damn, this is Prince. The right. biggest sex symbol on the planet. So... Somebody bad as Neil Long being intimidated by somebody looks should just go to show how dudes should understand that any woman can be intimidated by your looks. So right. it's not about your looks. It's really about is she securing herself and are you confident? Right, exactly, exactly. And and that's the thing that dudes don't understand because sometimes, you know, a woman thinking you're attractive or she's attracted to you on the looks department and she's intimidated by it, it's almost like you got to be even more on top of your game because you got to get her to bypass her insecurity to even start fucking with you. You see what I'm saying? Because Absolutely. a lot of times a chick, she'll deal with a dude who isn't really even that, um, you know, great looking because she's she's more comfortable around him. Like that guy makes her feel even more beautiful than she is or whatever it is. So if you're this good looking dude and you're already around a chick who might have some insecurities, you're you being that um, attractive is going to, you know, it's going to basically make it harder for you a lot of times in the long run. Now, I don't the thing is, I don't want guys to think like, oh, we're saying that if you're good looking that, you know, it, you know, it, or, you know, it doesn't matter because like girls are going to not want you whatever because they're too intimidating. Nah, a chick will see you think you're good looking, think you're attractive and be attracted to you. And it is what it is. The problem is too many guys are comparing themselves to every other guy and they're stopping themselves. Right. They're like, oh, well, I don't look as good as Brad Pitt or Idris Elba or Channing Tatum or this and that. So they think, OK, since I don't look like those guys then that means no girl's going to like me. Because just like another caller said, he said that the dude did a video saying, well, the average looking guys get no play at all. Like, it was just like, they get nothing. Right. And the super good looking guys get um, everything. And this, this is the funny part that people don't understand. If we're going to, like, because I always say looks are subjective, right? But if we're going to go on an objective standpoint and say, let's say guys who look like Brad Pitt or Idris Elba or Channing Tatum, right? Only there's only like maybe ten percent, if that much, of the population of guys who look like that. You understand what I'm right. saying? There's only a small there's only a small percentage. There's only a small right. percentage. So there's only a, there's only a, a, a enough women that those guys can even deal with. So you got all these other women out here who's not going to be able to even get access to those guys because there's not that many. So who are these other women getting with? They're getting with other guys who don't look like them. You see what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. So it's just like... And then at the same time, on the same token, um, so a, a handful of chicks might even not find Brad Pitt attractive. Exactly. That, or even that's what I'm saying. attractive. Exactly. That's, that's all in opinion. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Real talk. And that's the thing they don't understand. See, they're looking at shit through this one little dimension of oh because they because every time you say good looking <clears throat> they say good looking as if good looking is a fact you feel what i'm saying all right, all right. so it, you know what I mean? like that's the thing because truthfully truthfully a, a lot of times it's not really about just looking because you got guys you know you got guys out here who uh objectively some people would say is good looking but they don't get a lot of women why because they're super nerdy or they're super like corny or the women don't really get like uh because i think my dude my dude ron wills made a video about this other day where he's saying that you know there's like a difference between a guy being good looking and a guy being sexy to a woman or having that sexual charisma you feel what i'm saying and so right, right. you know what i mean so some guys who are good looking 
uh, you know, objectively, like they have a physically nice looking appearance, they don't they don't have sex appeal. You understand what I'm saying? So you could be right. a good looking guy with no sex appeal. And you could be a right. guy who's who's not so good looking, but you got sex appeal like a motherfucker. You feel what I'm saying? Right. So, like stop the ranks. Right, exactly, right. It's like, you know what I mean? Right. Like, like, yo. Exactly. Like, it's a lot of dudes. Like, you know, you know who's who's a, a dude, you know that dude that plays um um uh, James Bond, he played the, uh, Daniel Craig, I think his name Daniel is. Daniel Craig, yeah. Right, right. Daniel Craig, yeah. That dude, you know how many chicks like that dude? And he, he's right, not like what someone right. would consider like, oh, he's like super good looking, but he has like a sex appeal to him which women find attractive. You see what I'm saying? Right. And so, and, that, and a lot of that came after he played James Bond. Right, exactly. You know, so that persona, that whole it, persona. Exactly, exactly. You, like, you remember, I don't know how old you are, but if you remember that show, Family Matters, with uh, Steve yeah. Urkel, Steve Urkel, yeah, right, same shit. He in one minute he's the nerdy Steve Urkel, then the next minute he turns into the cool Stefan Urkel. It's the same oh, yeah. motherfucker, just he changed his style up a little bit and his swag, right. and now he's more attractive. And that's exactly right. how it goes. You see what I mean? That's exactly Absolutely. how it goes. But you know, real talk, man, <laughs> real talk. And it's crazy, man, because it's, it's ironic, too, and this kind of goes along with what we're talking about. Me, like, I'm a, I am ain't trying to toot my own horn, but I'm I'm an attractive guy. I'm right. Different hair, unique hair texture, six mm. foot three, right. slim, fit. Mm. I've done modeling, acting. Mm. I, you know, I've done Michael Jackson impersonations. So, right. you know, I got the look down to the teeth, and mm. I keep my style up, this and that. Right. But I learned a lot of game from somebody who's older. And more experienced and less attractive than me. That's right. where I'm learning a lot of game from. Right. So it ain't about how physically good you look. It's you got the style and the, the vibe and the aura behind that. Mm -hmm. That's what matters. Right. Right. Because a lot of game that I fucking um, uh, you know, like learned was from dude to most cats would be like, like, how's this guy getting chicks? You understand what I'm saying? Because right. man, I had I had a friend who who dude he was and, and this nigga he was like. He almost looked like not as not as uh, not the same as as Biggie Smalls, but he had he was almost <laughs> in that range where he was he was kind of fat, dark skinned dude, whatever. But the nigga, yo, he had chicks like crazy. Like I, I've seen chicks fight over this dude. You understand what I'm saying? So right. when I saw shit like that, I was like, what the fuck? Like, and this nigga put me on to so much game. I was like, yo, like shit to where. At that point, I was I was so much of a simp that I I brushed off a lot of shit he said at first, and then and then later on it started to click. You feel what I'm saying? Because the shit right. he would say to me, I was like, "Come on, that can't be true." Now nah, you can't, you know what I mean? Like you can't you can't say that to women. You can't. And he was letting me know, and I'm just like, "Nah." And then as as I grew up, I was like, "Yo, everything this dude was saying was on point," and it just started clicking. I was like, "Yo, he he was saying some real shit." And so that's and that's what happens to a lot of cats. They they're 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 so ignorant when it comes to the game because they haven't really experienced certain things. They haven't put themselves out there. Because when dude was put me on the game, you know, I haven't really put myself out there. You understand? I was looking at it on from the sidelines. I was listening to what you know popular culture was saying. You know how TV and and movies try to sort of influence your thought process on the game, where they show you all that right. soft goofy shit that don't really work except in the movies. You feel what I'm saying? So right. I was on that, and I'm like, "Yo, this shit is uh, is fucking like crazy." That a lot of dudes don't understand what's really going on out in these streets because they're they're sitting behind a computer all day, and they're not really putting themselves out there. You see what I mean? So right. it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Shit right. is crazy. The man. whole persona. It's the whole persona. Hey, uh, how does it feel to ride a bike? I can tell you this and that, this mm -hmm. and that, but until you get your ass on the bike, you will never know. Exactly. Exactly. It's really that simple. It's really that yep. simple, and unfortunately, a lot of dudes they don't they don't understand it. They don't know. They don't know that this is how it goes. You see what I mean? And then since they don't know that, they live in the same bubble of thinking that things are the way they are based off of what they've been like just taught through listening to it from other people. I'm like, yo, you got to go out there and do it so you can see for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? It's like, yo, don't take my word for the shit. See yourself. You feel see for yourself. You know what I mean? 
Cause like these, yes, like these yes, fucking, sir. like these fucking cats out here who put the, you know, they be doing those online dating tests where they they put the fucking like we was talking about earlier, putting the male model pictures and all this other shit, and then getting responses. And I'm like, yo, and and this is the thing that they don't understand too, is that it's feeding a woman's ego to think that she got this male model to holler at her. So of course she's going to respond and you know do all the other shit, but that doesn't necessarily mean that she's going to follow through. You see what I'm saying? Cause just like I don't know if you remember that dude, um, what's his name, Jeremy Meeks, that nigga that got locked up and they they had his mugshot all over the internet and all these girls yeah, were going crazy. Yeah, light skin dude, yeah. Right, so everybody was like, oh, see, it's all about looks and yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, yo, you got to understand, there's a difference between women talking shit and women actually doing shit. It's two right. totally different worlds. This so It's like this. I, I, I'll bring it as simple as this. How many times has a chick agreed to go on a date with you and then didn't go on a date with you. You see what I'm saying? Right. So so what would make you think? So how many times a chick is going to say, oh, that guy's so fine, he's so hot, I want get, to get with him, and then she doesn't get with him. It's the same fucking thing. Women will talk shit and not do the shit they talking about. You see what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. <laughs> Just like the uh, beer gang shit. I ain't never rocked the beer. I shave all the time, so I, don't, right. I, I keep my face clean. Right. I, I know a lot of guys out here with beers ain't getting no play. Oh, and on course. top of that, I've never had and the girls that's going crazy I see on Facebook. Mm. I'm like, damn, I just already smashed you. I just smashed half the chicks. Right, right. Over dudes with beers. But guess <laughs> what? I ain't never rocked the beers. Right, right, right. Exactly. So women just, it, it, you know what I'm saying? Women are very, they're very um, trendy. It, yeah, whatever's hot, they go with exactly. it. Exactly. Once that dies down, they back to they they're they like stuff. women are women are they hype beasts. That's what they are. Right. They're freaking hype beasts. It's like whatever is hot at the moment is and, and it it just goes off their emotion. It's like oh, I'm feeling like this right now, so I want right. to fucking get on it. But it's not. They're not really trying to like you know go in. You know what I'm saying? It's it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous, bro. <laughs> but yo, man, I, I appreciate you calling in, bro. And as you said, talking some real shit. You feel me? No doubt, man. Keep it up, man. The game that changed my life. Appreciate you, That's man. That's what's up, man. All right, man. I'll holler at you. All right. Yeah, man. This shit. Whew. I'm telling you, one day, you know, some of these, some of these dudes is going to get it, man. They're going to understand what the fuck is going on. They're going to understand what the fuck is going on. But yeah, guys, make sure you get How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day, the ebook, Hard copy and the audiobook all right so for all you lazy guys out there that don't want to read get the audiobook i'm telling you and each thing comes with two bonus audio programs so if you get this book i'm going to email you the two bonus audio programs which is called the confidence booster and the conversation booster so make sure you guys get that so you feel what i'm saying so you can definitely step up your game but um dre the great said dudes will never get it it's true <laughs> oh man it's crazy Stinky E said game will not only get you bitches but other things in life as well exactly because all game is is strategy it's just strategy Kobe what up what's going on your small time what's going on with you Yo, what's poppin'? Who's this? Yo, this is uh, Jason from Ohio. What up, bro? What's going on with you? Not much. Hey, uh, I, I watched one of your videos. Uh, you were talking about not uh, taking life too seriously. Can you uh, expound on that? Oh, the video I was saying that, um, was it the for, the for the Motivation Channel you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, so I did a video the other day um, where I was talking about the reason why um, most people are unhappy... <laughs> Is because they take their life too seriously. So basically what I'm saying is this. Is that, you know, you got to... And I talked about this before. It's like, you got to, you know, understand life on two different levels. You got to understand the level of worldly worldly things. Which is, you know, your job, your house, your clothes, your girlfriends, your, your family. That's, you know, that's worldly shit. You understand? But on another level, right? You got to understand life from a bird's eye view meaning... That, you know, life is short. You're going to, you know, die one day. You understand? Um, 
And so basically understanding that this whole life thing is a game. You understand? All of this shit that you were born into and all the stuff that you take seriously is really not that serious. So what I mean is that a lot of people get unhappy because, for example, they're trying to... A lot of people want to be liked by everybody. So if you want to be liked a lot, that's coming from your ego, coming from feeling like you need to be liked by everybody in order to feel good. Or even we could take it to love. You want to be loved... Because you feel like you need for someone to love you in order for you to feel good. Or you feel like, I got to get a lot of money. Because you feel like you need a lot of money to be happy. Because if you don't have a lot of money, then people aren't going to think you're cool or take you seriously and all this other stuff. But when you hey, realize hey, that... Like, uh, I, no, no point, no, I ain't mean to interrupt you, but mm -hmm. uh, like, look, into those things you mentioned, that's like another reason why they think it's important because of the security. You know, it's like mm -hmm. all those things, you know, it, it gives you a... Some type of at least a feeling of being secure in something, knowing that you got those things going for you. Right, right, I and mean, that's, that's just a, right, and that's the thing that ahead. that fucks people up is because having that having that sense of security usually is the actually the thing that does make you unhappy. It's funny because you would think that the the sense of security will make you feel better about yourself or or feel good, but the security is the thing that actually gives you the anxiety or gives you the unhappiness. The reason why is because the the sense of security basically means that you're you're not secure, which is why you need the security. So you're always in fear of that security not being there. You understand what I'm saying? So if you feel like, "Oh, I got all this money, so or I want to get all this money so that I could feel, you know, like I'm good with money and I don't got to worry about all this other shit." then the more money you get or the, or when you're just thinking about money is going to solve your problems, then every time when you lose money or you're not making as much money or you're just stagnant with your money, you're going to be, you're going to have this anxiety because you're going to be like, damn, well, I need this money to feel good, but what if I start losing it? How come I'm not getting paid as much? How come? So now all this anxiety comes in. So the thing is, in order for you to actually really truly be happy in, in just in general, I'm just saying it's on a simple terms, is that you have to let go of the things you think you need in life in order to actually enjoy your life. You understand? Because when you hold on tight to too much shit or you're so attached to things, then you can't really enjoy it. Like this is this is like the story I was listening to um, uh, this dude named Alan Watts. So all you guys should listen to Alan Watts. He, he says a lot of good game on this stuff about happiness and stuff. He was saying that uh, uh, there was a, a little girl who had a, a bunny, like she got a bunny rabbit, and she was so excited to get the bunny that she was holding on tight to the bunny and squeezed it, and then it died because she was hold. She was so excited. Oh my god, I got this bunny. I don't want to ever let you go. And then the bunny fucking died because of too much squeezing and suffocation of wanting to grab hold of it. So now, therefore, she didn't have it anymore. So the thing is that when you cling to life. When you're grabbing onto life, you don't enjoy it because you're sucking the energy out of life with your clinginess. This is what this is. We can even take this to women. You understand this? You can take it to relationships. You ever notice the more that you're sweating a girl, the more that you're trying to cling to her, she runs away. You understand? But right. if you fall back and you just chill and enjoy the moment, that makes her want to continue to fuck with you. You understand what I'm saying? Because you're not being clingy. clingy. You have faith. In the fact that shit is just going to be how it's going to be and it is going to be what it's going to be. And you're not really scared to just do your thing and chill and do what you got to do. But if you're always clingy, if you're always uh, trying to like uh, get that sense of security and oh, everything needs to happen this way, then you're taking life too damn seriously. You understand? And that's where you get all upset about shit. And that's where you sort of, you know, you don't you don't enjoy yourself. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, so it's, it's one of those things, man. You know what I mean? All right. So it's yeah, crazy. Well, that's, it. that's, that's the only question I had. Cool, cool. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you calling, bro. All right, man. I'm holler at you. But yeah, man, you know, it's like... Motherfuckers be taking shit too seriously, man. Motherfuckers take shit too seriously, man. It's, you know... Life is short, man. You just, is you know... <laughs> just gotta do your thing. Yo, what's going on? Who's this? Yeah, this is uh, Drake from uh, South Carolina. What up, bro? What's going on? All right. 
I want to um, ask, what is your um, opinion on for business owners? Because, um, like, when you be, become successful, you don't have time to really go out and talk to women mm -hmm. and have successful relationships because you focus on the business. What is your your um, opinion on how can a business owner mm -hmm. get women? Right. Well, the thing is, 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 is a lot of... You have to be very, very uh, strict on time management, and you have to uh, eliminate a lot of the fuckery that uh, you're dealing with when it comes to women. So, so just in general, because I always tell guys, look, when you're dealing with girls, don't waste time with them, charge them to the game if they on some bullshit, whatever, whatever. But when you're a business owner, you're doing some type of business shit, and you're focusing on, you know, your own entrepreneurial, uh, you know, endeavors and everything. And when it comes to dealing with women, you really got to be on point. You really got to be uh, um, like strict with your shit. You understand what I'm saying? To the point where like I'll give myself as an example, right? So, you know, I got a wife and I got a girlfriend. And then sometimes I still fuck with other chicks, right? So, but and I also run a business. So the way that I do it, it's always business first. You understand? Like I had this chick the other day who wanted to see me or whatever and... I was like, look, I can holler at you at this time because I got to, you know, take care of this business. So after I take care of this business, I'll come and holler at you. You see what I mean? But anytime that I'm orchestrating any situation with a woman, she has to be bringing a million percent cooperation. Anytime that there's no, any sign of th there being no cooperation, you have to cut that shit off immediately. So when I tell you guys, um, you know, just in general, like let's say if you're just the average dude who's not really, you know, you're just working on a five, then you can have a little bit more leeway to do certain things you might hit a chick up even after she flaked if she's sent a counter day or whatever but in in the situation if you're a business dude if a chick flakes on you once you gotta you gotta charge us to the game immediately if you're trying to deal with a chick and she's uncooperative you gotta charge us to the game immediately if a chick is you know um you know wasting your time in any way you gotta charge a chick to the game immediately because any woman that you deal with when you're in a situation when you're a business owner has to run as smoothly as every other thing you're doing as far as your schedule is concerned. Because you are you got to be so on top of your shit that you even giving her time is, is, is being scheduled within you running your business. So for example, you might say, okay, this is today's Monday or Tuesday or whatever. I got uh, to do these 10 things and this girl is the 11th. I could find some time to see her from fucking 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. tonight. You feel what I'm saying? And that's it. Now, if she flakes on that or if she is on some, oh, I don't know, and blah, 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 blah. Well, we're done. I, I got to take you out the schedule. I ain't fucking with you. Goodbye. You understand? Because you need to make sure that any chick you're dealing with is on point. And, and, and this is very, very, very fucking important. And you got to make sure you are watching the type of women you're dealing with because, and this goes for everybody, but just especially in this situation, the fact that you're trying to uh, run a business, you have no time to fuck around with bullshit ass chicks who are going to bring any type of drama or, or nonsense to your life. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's going to affect your business. That's going to affect you. That's going to affect your energy. You see what I mean? So that's like, uh, that's like Donald Trump. Right, right. Say that again? I said, that's like uh, Donald Trump. Donald Trump? What do you mean? Yeah. If Donald Trump will play around, he speak his mind. Right. Well, I mean, well, I mean, Donald Trump, you know, he's a businessman. Um, you know, I don't know how he deals with his situation. I think he got some, some mail order bride. That's what I heard. But, you know, just in general, you know, and, and I even say this because, you know, I'm the type of dude who I don't necessarily... Um, condone motherfuckers giving chicks money. You understand what I'm saying? But I'm on some shit where the only time I would like even, you know, uh, like an exception to that is if a dude is so busy that he don't really got time. Like he literally doesn't have time to fuck with chicks. So he might go and, and, and do something, you know, some other shit on the side. You feel what I'm saying? But generally, you need to make sure that your schedule and everything is on point and the chicks that you're dealing with fit into that schedule uh, seamlessly and they're not doing any uncooperative shit 
They're not doing any fucking bullshit. They're not, uh, you know, wasting your time. If they're doing any of that, you got to just kick the ass to the curb. You see what I mean? So it's just really a lot yeah, of right. time management and, and making sure that you're not dealing with bullshit bitches. You feel what I mean? Yeah, last question. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, you got a white wife, right? Right. Okay. How can, um, let's say if I wanted to get like a, a white woman, mm. like I feel that they don't, you think they don't really understand you, like, the, like a black woman mm. would understand you? I mean, no, they don't. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Oh. The only time they, they'll, they'll understand only to the extent that I can explain shit to them. You see what I mean? But, um. But they're never really, they'll never really, really understand, you know, to, to, to that extent. You feel what I'm saying? Because they're not black. You feel what I mean? So the thing is, is that if you're dealing with, if you're black and you're dealing with a white chick, right? You just need to make sure that she's not on some low-key uh, white supremacist type of vibe. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's that's all you got to really all worry of them about. Is, Say it again. I said almost like. All of white women is on that type of stuff. Oh no 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 nah they are not trust me. <laughs> I've been with um, enough I've been with enough white chicks to 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 understand that they're all, they're all not. It's like because like it's like anything else. It's like you can't. It's like you can't. There's never all with anything. You see what I'm saying? Like there's, there's always there's always exceptions and there's always gonna be different. So it's like someone saying like you know. All all men watch sports. Like all men don't watch sports. I don't watch sports. You feel what I'm saying? Like there's never gonna be all. So you just gotta you just gotta make sure you're 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 picking out or you're seeing the chicks that who aren't on that shit. And then sometimes you have you have ones who um they'll try to pretend they're not, but they are. You feel what I'm saying? So you gotta know you gotta figure that out. You gotta know if they're you gotta peep that because I've I've dealt with chicks who was like, oh, I'm not, you know, I'm not racist and I love everybody and yada, yada, yada. And I can't, you know, this and that. And they try to act like they on that, ain't on that shit, but they really on that bullshit. You feel what I'm saying? So, so what is your definition of racist? Say that again? I said, what is your definition of racist? Well, racist basically is, well, you have different, you have different things. You have, what the main thing is, is that if you're racist, you are um, a person who actively is engaging in, um, you know, activities as far as socially, economically, uh, politically, whatever, that affects another group of people, and you're a part of that group, you understand? And you're you're using that to affect them. So if I'm with a white chick or if I'm, you know, and they're actively using their whiteness to do shit like that, you understand what I'm saying? Then she's racist. If she's not, and she doesn't believe that way in, in that shit, then she's not racist. You see what I'm saying? So it's a different type of thing. But see, you got to you gotta be a, a, a good judge of character. You understand? When you're dealing with certain people. You see what I'm saying? And so you got to yeah. sort of figure out those, those little things. Because this is the thing. The fact that a person, right, is, you know... Because I, I truly believe that, like, if you're white... And you're in this society, you have had racist thoughts at some point. Like I don't believe any white person um, living, you know what I'm saying, hasn't had racist thoughts. You feel what I'm saying? So, but just because you're in a racist society, right? And so, to the extent of you understanding what those racist thoughts mean to you, or or if you act on those racist thoughts. Or if you continue to have those racist thoughts, or you use those thoughts to, you know, to, to entice action or whatever, that's a different story. You see what I'm saying? So if, if a, saying, we go ahead and say it again. Saying, so you saying that all white people have thoughts? So technically, all of them is racist. No, no, I'm saying that all of them have had a racist thought. You feel what I'm saying? So that makes them racist, right? No, it's like this. If you saw, if you saw a chick. Who was, um, you know, like, let's say a chick was like 17, but she, you thought, she, and she was bad or whatever. And you was like, oh, I would smash that chick or whatever in like a year or two. You feel what I'm saying? That doesn't make yeah. you a pedophile because you had the thought. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, what I'm saying is that the thought is actually indoctrinated in you. 
You understand? So I'm not giving an excuse to to someone who's being racist. I'm just saying the reality is is that there most likely has been a racist thought in this white person being in a racist society. Like it's it's you can't you can't I don't think you can you can't get away from that. You understand what I'm saying? Meaning that um it takes a certain level of awareness to get out of that thought or that thought process. You see what I'm saying? And so that's why if I'm dealing with a woman who's white, she has to be at a certain level of awareness. And that's what I look for if I'm if I'm dealing with any chick who's white. You feel what I'm saying? But you never think that she's gonna ever like backstab you. Say that again. You never think that she might at the end like backstab you. Back who? Just like my wife or any other white chick that I'm yeah, dealing with. Because like in every movie and thing, like stuff like that, mm-hmm. the woman always backstab you. Well, that see that's the thing at, though. At the end. That's the thing though. You gotta understand. You gotta understand something is that. You always, at the end of the day, because, and this is what I was talking about with the other caller, where you have to live life on two different levels. You understand? So one level is understanding the world and worldly shit, right? Then another level is understanding things from sort of like a objective point of view. So on the worldly level, I'm like, okay, you a white person, right? So within that, you're in this world as a white person, you're in this world as a black person, whatever, whatever, right? But at the same time, on another level, you're still an individual. You see what I'm saying? So you have to always, you know, go back and forth on those different things. So as an individual, and I'm seeing you as an individual because I always see a person as that individual first, because at the end of the day, when you look at it from an objective point of view, it's all about the individual. You see what I'm saying? I'm saying, okay, as an individual, would you or would you not do this certain thing? Now, I don't know. That could be anybody. It doesn't matter if they're white, black. Anybody could stab me in the back. Anybody could turn on me. Anybody could uh, shit on me. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm under the uh, the, the, the the thought process, and I've said this in a, a few videos, is that when you talk about trust, right, It's it, you, you can't really trust anybody. You understand what I'm saying? All you can yeah. trust is that a person is going to do what they want to do and be who they want to be. Period. So, so you think that, uh, so let's say somebody, like you got something, right? And then all your money, mm. you think your white wife's going to spend that money in the black community or she's going to spend that money in her community? Wait, say that again? All that money. I said, let's say you got, right? And you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go ahead. All right. Let's say you die. Mm-hmm. And you work all your life. Mm-hmm. Then all your money goes to your white wife. Mm-hmm. So you think she's going to spend that in your community mm-hmm. or go back and spend the money on, in her community? Right. Well, see, that's the thing. And that's that's the, all the money's not going to my wife. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, <laughs> so I already have, that, I already have that, that set up like that. You see what I mean? And again... That's two levels because some of the money has to go to my wife because she helped me build what the fuck I'm doing right now. Like, this wouldn't even be happening without the help of my wife. You see what I'm saying? And this is why I'm saying that things are deeper than just black and white. You see what I'm saying? So this, this, is, why, this is what I got to get people to understand is that the, 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 the trick that the world is trying to pull on you is to see things as just black and white. And this is why I say you got to live on two levels because on the on one level you can see it as black and white, but on another on another level you have to see things as much deeper than that. Because the thing is, if I'm if I'm chilling with this with this woman, who's a woman first, you know what I'm saying, and then we get to her being white or me being black or whatever, whatever that's other shit. You see what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that if I'm dealing with my if my with my wife and she's helped me write this book. And I'm making money with this book that she helped me write, then that's both are our money. You see what I'm saying? So when I do die, of course she's gonna get some money. You see what I'm saying? But also she's not gonna get all the money because I still have money that I give to my family. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's so that and the thing is I just wanna I just wanna get you and, and I'm glad you asking these questions. The reason why I'm glad you're asking these questions is because 
I want to get you to the point where you should be uh, aware of what's going on in your surroundings and what's going on in life and what's going on with the whole racism thing and all this other stuff and racist shit and white supremacist and all that other craziness. You want to be aware of that, but you don't want it to get to you to the point where you, you just literally start seeing things in black and white. Because then, if you just start seeing the world just like that, you're basically going to miss out on shit that you need to really understand. And you're also going to be making a lot of decisions based just off of that type of thinking, which is not really good. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because then you're going to be like, oh, well, I'm not going to deal with this person or deal with this person based off of this. And I'm going to deal with this person just based off of that. And it's not, it doesn't really, you don't really, um, you don't really get things going in a beneficial way for yourself in the game like that. You see what I'm saying? And this, this, yeah. is, you see what I mean? Because, because it's, it's, it's the same thing where you, if you chill with a girl, you're going to see her and be like, oh, well, since she, since she looks this way, that means she is this way. You see what I'm saying? And, and if you and think Mike that, can, go ahead, what are you going to say? And Mike can benefit you too because she can talk to people in her community and just like P. Diddy, he got like a CEO that's mm. a white woman, so mm. she can do things that he can't do. He, mm. he, she can go to businesses and get contracts that he can't do because the, the business he might go to might be racist. Mm -hmm. Right, and, that, and that's another thing too. You you look, you got to know how to play the game. You see what I'm saying? So you know you can you can do certain things, uh, you know, based off of certain situations that you're in and use everything you have to your advantage. You see what I'm saying? So everything that I that I do, I use everything that I have to benefit myself, my family, and everything else. You see what I'm saying? So I use all the different directions. I'm not going to say, oh, I'm not going to fuck with this person because they're Asian and I'm only going to fuck with you because you're black and I'm not going to fuck with you because you're black or I'm not going to fuck with you because you're white or I'm not going to fuck with you because you from from Chicago or from Brooklyn or you from the East or the West. Like, all of that shit is bullshit. It's like, yo, what can we do to benefit the situation for, you know, yourself, your family, and everybody else? And that's how you got to look at shit. Because a lot of times people will say, you know, oh, you should hire just this person because they they look like you or they come from your neighborhood or whatever. Yeah, that's cool if you got the skills, but I'm not going to just hire you because of, you know, you my brother. I'm going to hire you because... You got the skills and the fact that you are my brother is a bonus. You see what I'm saying? Because if I just hire you because you're my brother, but you ain't know what the fuck you're doing, then this whole shit's going to fall apart. You see what I'm saying? And so that's the danger of just looking at the shit black and white. You see what I'm saying all the time? You see what I mean? Yeah. Hey, you a, you a deep thinker, <laughs> but that's all my person. That's what it is, bro. But oh shit, I got I to gotta get out of here. It's like 530. I got to set up for the... For the Stephen Dean show, man. But thanks for the call. Um, damn, I didn't even know the time was going. I was just going in. But anyway, so listen. <laughs> I want to thank all you guys for tuning in. I got to get ready for, for Steve the Dean. Make sure you guys tune into the Steve the Dean show with me and him with the Dating Advice Hour. Um, appreciate you all you guys for, um, you know, tuning in. Um, who we had in the building? We had Khalil. Darth Tyus was popping. We had Wealthy in the building, Sticky E, Kobe, Light Squad, CEO. Your Light Squad be having them funny ass comments though. Uh, Logan Braveheart, Tim G, Three Kings, Your Small Time, um, Explode, J, Paul, Sambula, Cool Cooley, Dude What 212. Who else we had up in the building? Um, Chris G. Infinite Ism, Water Song Ten was good, homie. Um, who else? We got a lot of people up in up in this piece, man. Jimmy Flicks, Cairo eighty six. Yeah, I still calling in. I'm about to head up out of here, but listen, appreciate you guys flowing with your boy. Make sure you guys get How to Have Sex with Two Women a Day, the ebook, the hard copy, and the um, you know the the, the audio book. Make sure you guys hit me up on Patreon, patreon.com backslash Mr. Locario to hear the, the bad boy show. Also, make sure you guys sign up for the 30-minute game sessions, all right? So I'm going to holler at you guys later, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys. I might do a, another stream 
uh, during the week, I will let you guys know. All right? So I will holler at you guys later. And remember, the truth is inside you. Peace. I'm gone.